everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by NatureBox, Squarespace, and Upside. It's those. And also the Rooster Teeth story down there, I guess. Uh, I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Steve. And I'm Kib. And I'm also Gus. So we got uh, Steven and Kib from uh, Sugar Pine 7 with us this week. Joining us. First time on the RT Fox. It's actually the first time we met was just a little while ago, like uh, I guess earlier this afternoon. Yeah, you're the only person from RT I've never met. I think I, think. I yeah. saw you guys at RTX trying to figure out how to get into an elevator. You didn't help oh. them? You didn't help us? I was in a hurry. You just carried on not nope. meeting them? I, figuring out how to get into an elevator. But you had enough time to notice that we were struggling. Yeah. And it, it, fair enough. Probably. <laughs> it, that, that's how you grow. Why were True. we struggling to get into an elevator? I don't remember. You were like on the freight docks and you were trying to get up into an elevator. As if you had to ask. Dude. Oh, no. It seems like it's something that could easily happen. Yeah. Like, oh, easily. I was, I, I was in a hurry. I was running somewhere. I was like, <laughs> I, should, I should introduce myself. But then I thought, but then I'm going to be dragged into this elevator situation. <laughs> you like, know how I'll, these things work? I'll just wait. Yeah. You no. could have easily figured it out for us. These people come with problems. Yeah. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> I, I got my own shit I got to deal with. What do you mean, like, these people, Gavin? All right. Ooh, frosty <laughs> already. Um, so yeah, you guys are, are in town for a couple days. And uh, how often do you all come to Austin? We've missed the last three flights here. We were sick one of the times. Three. Um, what are the other reasons? Yeah, three definitely or two at least. We literally just missed one. one and then we made it though. So two, we maybe one we missed and didn't come because the incident. We missed one because uh, someone was sick. And then we missed another because we didn't feel like going. And then the third one, I think there was a car accident or something. Was that what it was? There was a car accident or something. I'm not really entirely... <laughs> there was something... I don't know. We just keep missing it. So we haven't been out here in like three months. Yeah, there was a car... An easy answer to that question. <laughs> there, there was a car accident that, uh, that screwed up one of your trips. Ah. It was a small fender bender. Minor <laughs> fender bender. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've only ever been in one car accident. And it wasn't my fault. Like, I was driving down the road. And it was really low speed. Like, I'm driving down the road and, like, some idiot who's going the other direction, like, just turned right in front of me. And yeah. uh, so, like, I, I hit him, like, the front of my car gets all fucked up. My wife was in the car with me at the side. I pull over to the side of the road, and I just started screaming because I was so mad at that guy for, like, pulling <laughs> in front of me. And she, and she was like, calm down. What's wrong with you? I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like, I'm literally just going, like, 30 miles an hour down the road, and he just turns right in front of me. I was so fucking mad. Like, if you're going to get in a car accident, you should at least be going 60. Make or, it worthwhile. Or, like, it... it or have it be my fault. How did or he react to you? Oh, he like like I got so I got all pissed off. Then I get out of the car and I look at his car and it's like brand new. It still has dealer plates on. I'm like, okay, well at least he's pissed off too. Like at least it's not a piece of shit. Did you intimidate him? Uh, no, <laughs> that, that, that 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 wasn't my move. Why, I was like, why is anger first though in that situation? Why wouldn't you blow? Are you right? What's, are you on crack? What's up? Why'd you turn in front of me? Why would you? I, just I don't rage give a fuck. It's face? like the elevator thing again. I don't give a fuck about this guy. Like <laughs> this he's, guy he, came with a problem. Right, he, then he introduced a problem. Like I was fine. My day was going fine, and now I've got to deal with this shit. Right? It's like it's derailing me. Yeah, but you're just screaming at a stranger. He can no, shoot I, scream, you. I screamed at my steering wheel. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm. the normal reaction is just to get out of the car, be like, "Are you okay?" and then start screaming. Yeah, I was like, "Do you have insurance?" You just skip one straight step. to screaming. Yes. So, did you do all your screaming in the car, and then did you get out and you're like, "Oh, oh hi, can I?" Yeah, hello. Can I get we should exchange insurance information. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I thought you meant you were screaming at him. No, no, no. I was screaming. No, no, no. I was screaming in the car at my steering wheel. I've gotten in three accidents and I drove away every time, <laughs> and they'll never catch. Kip hit this school of children that was going out at like by. They shouldn't have been walking around in the park. Wasn't a school bus. It was a school. It was a school oh, okay. of children, yeah. like a marching parade. Can you hit and run a building? Does that even? No, just well, no. Okay. It was like a, like how you would say a school of fish. Like it was like a school fish, of like children. Murder of crows. And I'll tell you, babbling of children. Didn't regret They're a thing. all dead. <laughs> They're all dead now. Every single one of them. Every last one. Each one more dead than the last. Every last drop. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beauty of a live stream. <laughs> Cut. Have you ever been No, no, God. Oh. No, actually. And I've driven across the continent. Very cool. Who's calling me? Fareed's. Lewis is calling me right now. <laughs> Do we answer? If you want, I'm sure. Oh, um, God. Hello, Lewis. I'm trying to do Steve's voice. Who is this? Is this Steve? Of course. <laughs> You're telling me he's on the fucking mic. Oh, Say nothing you don't want on the Rich Steve podcast. <laughs> oh, am I on right now? No. That's right. Well, well, I mean, we booked him for the podcast, right, and you okay. called him during the podcast, so I mean... <laughs> he hates being in content, so he probably hated that, right? Good! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he will never let us put him in a bit. He walks away, like, ah! Just leaves the room every single time. At one point, we were trying to get something done, and he was coming into Achievement Hunter to, I assume, talk to Jeff about some nonsense that would derail our video. Oh, so I just pulled out my ca camera and <laughs> 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 He just walked away. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just filmed the let's Oh my god, we have a Fareed, I mean, uh, a Lewis repellent. We need more people like that, run away from the camera. Mm. Lewis never comes to us anyway. Speaking of running away from the camera, I felt really bad. Apparently, uh, we bumped James. He's over there. He's stewing at me. James? Is James over there? Is he over here somewhere? Does he want my seat for a bit? No, he uh, apparently uh, 
Yeah, like, uh, like uh, who was it? Someone internally came to me and was like, hey, Sugar Pie Sam's going to be here. Do you want anyone? I said, cool, we only have two seats. Let's get um, uh, Steven and Kib on set. And <laughs> no one told anybody else. Oh, and I just found yeah. out like, right before the podcast. I'm like, well, I feel terrible now. Again, this is a problem being introduced to me. <laughs> it's like, I'd already, I thought this was already taken care of. So do you take your anger out on people in the RT uh, faculty? Who gets the brunt of it? No, I, I scream into my pillow a lot. Mm. Oh, okay. He has the special work pillow. Yeah. I think I have a like a reputation externally of being really angry, but I don't think that's really true. What do you think? You spend a not, lot of time. Not anymore. Time What's that? They yeah. the, the, the people who make me angry go through Patrick to, to, to deliver messages. <laughs> but you seem so happy. Like you're just smiling yeah, and enjoying we're, life. We're on camera. You used to be way more angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Do you take something now? No. Uh, I, I took uh, about 39 years of living. <laughs> have you guys ever tried meditating? Old age. No, I've never Meditation? tried that. I've actually tried it, and it's really nice. No, seriously, I legitimately learned how to meditate. I'm not smiling Two for any reason, options. I believe you. Do you want to know how you guys want to try it right now? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, before you tell us, how do you learn how to meditate? There's, like, methods and ways that you have to think in your head to actually, like, do it and get to that meditation place. Well, if I'm thinking about, like, important shit in and my life. And that's exactly what you don't do. Well, you do, but then you, like, so you close your eyes and you imagine bubbles, and every thought that you have, you, like, wait. pop it. You, like, <laughs> pop it and goes away, and the next thought that comes up, you keep popping them and keep popping them and popping them until there's no thoughts and you're just left with this. But then I'm going to be literally thinking about bubbles and popping bubbles, and then I have to pop well, the bubble that's that pop in. the bubble of the bubbles, Gavin. So you... You I imagine did. popping bubbles, and then by the time you've popped the last bubble, you're well, supposed to be Well, every thought, free. you pop it. Yeah. By the time, eventually you just do it and do it and do it, and you won't have any more <laughs> thoughts, and you'll just be left with a nice, So I have to imagine moment. a thought, and then I have to imagine the thought as a bubble, and I pop the bubble, but what if I'm, what if I'm still thinking, what if the if thought pop comes it, out of the bubble? It, pop it. It's like Inception, right? It is. It's like bubbles within bubbles. <laughs> eventually, Bubbleception. Eventually, you're just sat there drooling. Exactly, and that's meditation. My version of it. <laughs> do you have to do like do you have to sit a certain way? Do you have to do like the lotus pose or something? Or you can do it like... any way your heart desires. Yes. Okay. You know what I mean. You can be in your car screaming at your steering wheel, or <laughs> you can be lying down in a Who bed. Who taught you this? You did. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded an app because someone was speaking about their meditation app, and I downloaded. it. I was like, I'll give this a go. And then it was like, you have to pay for the service. And I oh, thought, oh, instantly I'm, never using it. Maybe never, maybe not do that yeah. right now. And then I thought maybe I'd get back to it if I really need it. I never, never again. That's I like, almost learned how to meditate though. But there would, some people, there would, there would be a great scam if you had like, pay a nickel to meditate app. Oh my <laughs> like, god. <laughs> and then like, you're just thinking about how you paid for this. You're like, ah, I could have done no, this just pop it. that bubble. Pop the nickel bu bubble. I Free. sort of believe in meditation because I did one of those, have you ever seen those pods where they fill it halfway with water? And oh. then it's like yeah, room temperature water and you just, deprivation. yeah. deprivation. I did one of those and it was the most peaceful thing I've ever done in my entire life. And did you go so into the upside down? Ooh. No, but I farted and I, <laughs> I had to like hot box myself. <laughs> how, how long, long, how long do you even got one that? sense and it's the sense of smell? <laughs> how long are you in that tank when they do that? An hour. You can go in longer though. Wow. But you can choose to have music on or you can choose to not have anything, which is what I did because I wanted the full experience. Mm -hmm. And I got in there. It wasn't working for about 10 minutes. I, and then I started thinking about high school. And then I just fell off. And all the bad things you did to people in high school. Yeah. You bully. And then I woke up and I farted a little bit. And then <laughs> it's a little enclosed tank, so it just kind of like stunk it up. I don't like really quiet spaces because I can hear my own ears. Like, like I can moving? Hear them. I can hear. You, have you ever had like a thing where you can almost hear the pulse of your blood in a vein in your ear? Yeah. No. Well, like in I, a complete silent room. Yeah. And Sometimes can, if you're lying a certain way and like things are just pressed in your body the right way, you can hear like. Yeah, I don't like that. I kind of like it. It's trippy. Did you guys know that Joe Rogan has his own like quiet room? What are they called? Well, it's completely silent. It's got like tons of soundproof, and you can hear absolutely nothing. A sensory deprivation. Center? Sensory deprivation. Yep, that's the one potentially. <laughs> well, I didn't know we, what they're called. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we wanted to do at one point we wanted to do a podcast in a room like that. And we were in contact with this military base out in California. It's like a proper anechoic which, chamber. Yeah, they God. have like the quietest room in the world. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, we were like working through all of that. Like we had to submit like paperwork to get like clearance to go onto this military base and to get into this room. And we, we ended up never doing it. I don't know. I don't know what happened. For, uh, I think it was that. a, I think I don't think I could go because I was foreign. Oh, right. That, that, um, and that was one of the reasons. Oh, that's why we was, couldn't do Fear Factor. Literally. Oh my God. We had, we went through like all these like paperwork things that really stoked to work with us. And then we had an interview and that was the last stage. Really excited about it. We get on for two seconds. She's like, it says here you're Canadian. And we're like, oh yeah, yeah. She's like, do you have an O one? Not yet. I'll see you later. <laughs> it was that all fast. the prep just out God. there, and I was so excited by that point because I was already psyching myself out on on doing any reality TV thing. So, what's your favorite kind of cockroach to eat? Mm. Bloodstone, June, June bugs, June bugs. 
We do have a lot of cockroaches in our office. Is that what you're getting at? No, no, no. That's, that, that's like the fear factor thing, right? Like you got to eat a bug. I feel like I would. I mean, yeah. I don't think I'd have a problem with eating anything. A live bug? They ask you what your uh, biggest fears are, and I said heights and bees. AIDS. No, you, you got to lie about that. It's like, what are your, what are your fears? Yeah, boobs. Boobs. <laughs> You're actually really oh afraid God. of snakes, right? Beer. I'm horrified of spiders mostly. Snakes as well. One time I was in uh, like a little hut. Um, a little, Where little, you in a hut? I was a little hut, like a little like a uh, boathouse hut. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I lift up a life jacket off the ground. A snake just falls out onto my foot. And I was just like, ah, and flew back faster than. Is light. that what caused the fear? Do you think that definitely like. I'm afraid of bees because I was on a bicycle when, as a kid. My mom was afraid of bees, so we were on like a double bicycle. And Your mom got stung. My mom was afraid of bees, and we fell off the bicycle. And I think from then on, I've just assumed bees are the most dangerous creatures. I was attacked by a swarm of bees and chased for like a good kilometer. How'd you escape? Run! My brother and I ran. We stepped in like we were in this like clay. I don't even know, like a clay mine or something. <laughs> and we were just digging. Up. We <laughs> so were young, young and playing with clay on a, a shack, a shanty a town, a clay lake. I mean, I feel like they running a, a kilometer would be slightly overkill for one. Some they, followed they, you. they followed us. Wasps though. will chase far. They may have been wasps, actually, because they were oh, in the it, ground. And there's oh. a bunch of them. We stepped Mud on their whole, their whole colony, and then they just stung millions of times all over our bodies, and we died and ran away from them as fast and far as we could, and they chased us. Well, the stings, <laughs> the stings like power you, right? Like it gives you adrenaline to oh, run absolutely. faster. Absolutely. Hop defense, like this. <laughs> stung a million times. I hate bees also. When I was a kid, I felt like when I would grow up, that bees would be a bigger problem than they were. Because yeah. it's like when you were a kid, like I felt like I was outside more, so I would get stung by bees every now and then. And like in the late '80s, early '90s, there was that thing like, "Oh, there's killer bees coming from South Africa. They're gonna sweep, swarm over the country, and they're was gonna it, kill the so massive the ones that they they talk about in the mysteries of the Avalon." Yeah, you lost me. Well, thank God they're all dying off. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, fuck bees, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's like, and now I'm an adult. I can't remember the last time I was stung by a bee. It's probably been like. 20 years, maybe really? longer. Really? You evaded bees for that long? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big bee That's evader. Incredible. They're looking for me to this day. I was talking by a baby bee recently. Remember we were filming that thing and I smacked the th and tried to smoke them out of the thing? I don't remember that at all. Yeah, the little green ones at my apartment complex. Oh, yeah, you got stung hardcore. <laughs> Tell them about it. I don't remember it, even the slightest. I'm I'm trying to act like I'm laughing, like I know what the story is right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You got stung hardcore. Bee. He was a little green. I don't even know if it was a bee or a if it was a bee. wasp. What kind of bee it was? It was a green bee with a bad attitude, <laughs> and he stung me on my back. <laughs> Sounds I, like a little cartoon character. <laughs> green bee with a bad attitude. Oh, you guys swelled up for weeks. Oh yeah. You guys vape so much, you would think the smoke would calm them. It's sugary smoke, so unfortunately, it only attracts. It, it makes it worse. What does the vaping look like, like from an outside perspective? Because for us, we know it's embarrassing, and we, but it's an addiction at this when, point. When you did it, it was really intimidating. Really? Because, Me. not not when you did it, when Steven did it. But kind he of did right it right. really hard. He like sucked it extremely hard. We were told not to vape, I'm pretty sure. That's a thing. We can't vape. No one told us not to You vape. mean in here? I don't recall in that. Here, yeah, in here, yeah. I said it might be bad for the lights. But then Kib practiced his master negotiation skills. It's called it was like, do it anyway. He was like, he was like, how about a little bit of vaping? Ask for permission like, and then ask for permission uh, and forgiveness. I guess if you're just gonna do it anyways, just do it. But I was talking to a, a dude on set recently who vaped uh, all the time, and then one time I saw him with a cigarette, and I was like, why? What's the point if you if you vape? He's like, well, something that was quite nice about smoking cigarettes is that everyone left, <laughs> and oh. got away from you. Or they would hate the smell and like move away, but with vaping, it's like, oh, it's a nice smell. So Crap. sometimes he actually genuinely wants to be alone, and he's like, I'll just go back to a cigarette for that one. Why not just be like, time. hey, I need some alone time? Because it's like, you, you don't want that confrontation every That's time true. you want to be That's alone. That's true. That's embarrassing. A lot of people smoke uh, or use vapes to get away from cigarettes, but I think ours is slowly leading into cigarettes. <laughs> I don't think so. You think you're going to smoke cigarettes now? I already am. Is, is vaping right. not as strong as a cigarette? Much less. Much, much less. What if you do two? Much less even. Two vapes at the same time, is that what you're saying? Yeah. We've done that. It's something we've done. Many oh, times. Yeah. Just like a cigarette. <laughs> no, it's much less than a cigarette, dude. Well, I mean, there's it's based on milligrams, right? So like a cigarette is what? Like 30 I, or no. 30 to 50? Yeah, something like, maybe it's like 28 or something like that, I'm not and sure. And then we're just smoking 6 milligrams on this. So it's we're significantly less. So and there's no carcinogens in The in whole vape vaping. cartridge is 6 milligrams. <gasps> God. Or is it like per puff? I think it's just uh, that I don't know. We don't know shit, Gavin. Hmm. We don't know. <laughs> He was going to drink four beers. He was really excited about it. Did you want like, me to drink beers? He was like, I can drink four bottles at once. And he was adamant that he could do it. Yeah, well, I did, and I would do it again if the time came and if I was asked to. If I was told to. Right now, I would do it if I was told to right now. Yeah, I feel like that's something that would make a huge mess. Yeah. It would. No, but he, you, to be fair, honestly, you said you could open your gullet, and I think that's an impressive skill. I can open my gullet. And just pour stuff straight down and the Shantai, hole. And Shantai, maybe. No, he can't. He can't. 
If I was asked to do it, I would do it. If I was asked to do it. I'm just gonna have one. You know, if you want to open your gullet, it's good to put here. a good thing I'll in your gullet. Here. Like nature box. Ah. And I want to remind everyone that we this episode of the Rooster Podcast is brought to you indeed by Nature Box. We all want to eat better, but when it comes to snacks, sometimes it feels like the whole world is delicious and a billion calories versus boring and tasteless. Doesn't have to be that way. So up your snack game with Nature Box. What are you looking for? Here. Nature Box has over a hundred snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, so you can feel good about what you're eating. And they got great things like apple and cinnamon oatmeal and crunchy barbecue twists. They're delicious and they don't weigh you down. Be sure to find your new snack obsession at Nature Box. They add new snacks every month inspired by real customer feedback, the latest food trends, and professional chefs. It's so simple. Just go to naturebox.com, choose the snacks you want, and Naturebox will deliver them right to your door, and there's no risk. If you ever try a snack you don't like, don't eat it. Naturebox will replace it for free. Right now, Naturebox is offering Rooster Teeth fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. That's naturebox.com slash roosterteeth for 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. Thank you, Naturebox, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast and for sending us delicious snacks. Um... That sounds delicious. Now you guys it's are so big good. Kevin Spacey fans, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed I was I was flipping through Netflix the other day and like they've replaced like the icon on yeah. House yeah. of Cards. Like now it's he's just gone from it. Like the big one on top, like he's still there, but like the smaller uh, little icons, he's just gone from. He's still gonna get a payout for this next season, I heard. I imagine. Yeah. Like so and millions so upon millions. they had started production. I think they were they had like filmed two episodes of the ten episode season, and then they just stopped it. I guess they have to rewrite it or figure out what they're gonna do now for it because it was already supposed to be the final season Do you guys watch House of Cards? No, no, I don't even watch it I feel like they should just disregard everything that happened after season two Because how many times can you watch a guy just try to make it in politics like he already did everything twice The first two seasons were incredible and then it just dropped off. It was which one was it? It was season four Four that I thought kind of dragged was that was the one with like a lot of the the Russian president subplot Yeah, I thought season three and four just felt like fillers. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then did season five come out? I I, yeah, it has come out. I haven't, oh. I haven't seen it. How yet. many episodes per season? Typically 13 10 to 13 somewhere in that range. Yeah, it's the same with the, every American show though they, because it does well They just keep making it But uh, like a lot of my favorite British shows They'll do six episodes for one season then they'll do a second season. That's it it's six like, episodes Yeah, because that's considered what like a mini season you guys call them six just an, was just normal TV before like that's what you guys would call a season, six episodes. Yeah, right? we call it series, but yeah. Well, it's like, well, but then, I mean, but you then, look at like Black Mirror, right? Like Black Mirror has like three episode seasons. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but and whenever Americans ask the creators of these British shows why they don't make more, it's like, well, like, we told the story. It was like we had we just be making up new crap now that it's kind of irrelevant to the. So I you guys have why integrity. They, we have profit, baby. It's as simple as that. Who rules the world? Well, that's that's why why Breaking Bad does, baby. It's true. Breaking, Breaking Bad, there was true. a the, the final season was. I didn't think it was good though. As good. They could have removed some, but it had some of the best episodes. But there was a lot of stuff oh, yeah. that they probably could have trimmed down. Their villains weren't that great in that season. I mean, I think their best villain yeah. ended after a while. I don't want to give any, Oh, Breaking well, Bad. Yeah. Best villain was Gus. Now, because them. we just talked about Thank Breaking you. Bad, I want to ask your opinions no. on Ozark. I don't want Steve to say they anything. They haven't seen it. You haven't seen Ozark at all? I've seen I, it. I haven't. I saw y'all talking about it though on your, uh, on your podcast. What do you think of Ozark? Medium. Really? I thought Medium. it was amazing. Cheers. Because. because well, I, actually, at first, I don't know if I was just in a tired, bad mood or something. I found the first few episodes just to be so depressing. And I, I was yeah. trying to apply it to my life. Like, oh, what if, like, what if I was smuggling? What if all my life went wrong? And I was like, wait, why am I? I'm not this guy. I'm not like a drug. <laughs> you were like, relating way too much. You're like, this is making me sad. It was giving me some sort of weird predictive an- anxiety. And then it was okay at the end. I really oh, liked it. Oh, you watched it. it all the way through? Yeah. What would you give it out of 10? Six. Wow. Well, Steve disliked it. Steve probably would give it a No, four. I would give it a six out of ten because it had redeeming qualities. It of was course. cool. It was very blue and green. Mm. I just like that <laughs> it felt as though it was in the same universe as Breaking Bad and it was a different story. There were similarities. There were character similarities as well with the relationship. I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't seen Breaking Bad. Yeah, because you're comparing it. You're like, yeah. ah, this is a ripoff of Breaking Bad. Yeah. But like, I like that because I haven't seen a show in so long that I was as hyped about in the same way as Breaking Bad. Other shows in different ways, but like as the, being a part of like the cartel and mm-hmm. the whole drug world and like it was just cool. I just really liked Ozark. I started. It was a, <laughs> yeah. There's there's some things I would I would say, but it's very spoilerish. <laughs> so I started. I, I finally started watching The Handmaid's Tale the other day. 
Oh, which, my fiance watches that all the time. Yeah, I'd never seen it. it. I was like, I don't, know, this, it, I don't get it. I don't know what it's about. I started watching it's it. It's depressing. It's really fucking good. It's so Jeez. depressing. Yeah. It makes me so sad. I don't know how Alyssa watches that. Yeah, it's, 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 but it's good. I mean, I think it's really compelling, but yeah, it's. It it's is. A, they have a lot of depth of field in that, that show. Yeah. Do you like to be made sad by shows? Uh, I like to feel anything. Are you just too happy and. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to feel something. Feel something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was really good. What else I started watching? I, started, I tried to watch Mind Hunter because everyone's like mm. losing their shit over that. I've heard about that too. Yeah. But the first episode was like so, like it starts great and then it's like so slow. And yeah. then everyone's like, wait, wait, you gotta watch the second one. You gotta watch the second one. I was like, okay, man, I'll get to it. Did you think the conversations between him and her, the hippie girl, and mm-hmm. the, they were just weird? Yeah, that was, that was just a weird relationship. Like even the way that they meet and they first start talking at that bar. I'm a huge fan of Fincher. I really am. And it's just, it, I wished the rest of the series was like the first scene. But mm-hmm. then I've talked to people that hate the first scene and that, and they like the rest of it. And it just, I learned people that have different opinions, I guess. Yeah. Not always right. I'm sure I'll go back and, and finish it. I'll, I'll keep watching it. Just like, there's so much shit to watch. Like, there's so many things out there that people are talking about and excited about. Like, Ozark. Like, mm-hmm. everyone fucking raves about it. I've got a million things to watch before I even think about that. It's on top of so like other it. video games and other shit I got to yeah. get done. Yeah. Did you hear about Tarantino's next movie? <clears throat> Oof. No. The Charles Manson murders? No. It's gonna be insane. <sighs> I mean, despite all the things that- Isn't this supposed to be his last movie, or does he have another one? I don't know if this is gonna be his last movie. I feel like everybody, I mean, even Daniel day is like, this is my last movie, mm-hmm. and then he's doing Phantom Thread now. Hmm. Um, so it's like, uh, nobody doesn't, or everybody comes back. But Except Harvey Weinstein. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hard. <laughs> Him, <laughs> Kevin Spacey, uh- Louis C.K. Louis C.K., they're all yeah, gonna make a wow. big production company, funded by Weinstein. They're gonna make the- Never mind. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's crazy because I have, like, I, I can't think of a, a proper way to articulate it. I've been wanting to say it, but I, I can't, I haven't figured out the elegant way to say it, so I'm just going to say it the blunt way. I've never shown my dick to anybody who didn't expect it. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand how you get over that hump where you're like, oh, maybe I'll just bring my dick out. Like, we'll see how it goes. Like, <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, I just can't wrap my head around like, Lucy that way Kay's of thinking. Like, whole thing is just like, it's so gross and awful, but like, it's funny in the sense of like, who goes, hey, you mind if I masturbate in front of you? Like, that's so <laughs> stupid, dude. God. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, I it's, think the best word is just gross. Yeah. It's just gross. And unnecessary. The worst part I about mean, that is. I oh. just don't understand the appeal. Like, it's clearly his thing. Like, he gets off on that. Yeah, and I I'm guess. sure there's like an equivalent for me of what it'd be, but. It's a power thing. Just is as gross, there? if not Yeah, it worse. has to be because Gavin. he could just go to a prostitute. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it, but he probably gets off on the hype of. You know, the are they gonna the want it? And then I don't care if they do or don't. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs like that too. And he's, yeah. It's uh, but the worst part about that is that um, I don't think anything he did is gonna turn out to be illegal, because he he asked and mm-hmm. they said yes. Uh, but I mean, their argument is that you know they felt like he was in a place of power and they had to do this, which is right. which is a it's a terrible thing. But it's like I don't think any any legal action can come from it. Well, isn't there something to do with it's like, like a loophole? Isn't there something to do with like your superior? I guess they don't directly work under him, so exactly, he's not yeah. their superior. It's like, just uh, he's in a position business. of power in the yeah, just the industry, industry in general. So just, yeah, you know. that's true. Mm-hmm. You guys have a lot, a lot of that here. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen so many dicks. <laughs> Who's jerking off in front of people here? Tell me now. <laughs> Is it Gavin? Have, have I ever seen a dick at work? <laughs> you guys have HR here, right? Yeah, we do. We do. Do they work a lot here? They have weird sure. issues, probably to contend with. Hmm. Do you guys have a lot of secret stuff you never talk about? Uh, yeah, there's some stuff that, 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 that doesn't get talked about. I think what that happens anywhere. Tell us. What, what is it? Well, just between you and me. <laughs> okay. Gavin, he's a predator. Yeah, I knew it. He's cereal. First moment. Cereal? Yeah. Well, at the source fed office, people you, you would pull out their cereal. balls and just stick them up against windows. Well, that's a family, dude. That's you know what, and now I don't think so much that, people would, <laughs> no. that anyone could get away with that, but that was definitely a thing in the past. That's Not so me. Funny. I wasn't there when it happened. I, I had my clothes off here. I've definitely become more... Aware that I might offend someone, like uh, mm. it was before this these scandal things. But we had a, we have a bunch of fake dicks all around the office, as and you I, should. And I thought I'll pop, I'll pop one through, and I'll give you know be a little shock. Give factor. someone a scare. Oh, yeah, pop one through. Because someone will be like, oh, oh is no, that it's your a fake dick? dick? No, oh, it's not. And then I thought I shouldn't even be doing it with a fake dick, so I just didn't do it. Because <laughs> it just felt wrong. But I feel like a few years ago but, I would have just been like, Woo-hoo. and yeah, you, I mean, you. That's probably the place where there's the most dick visible is in the achievement hunter office. Yeah, everywhere. Dick I think not, not areas that are dick, more accepted with that, like the achievement hunter office should have that happen. But we don't actually ever see each other's dicks. Like have the, you only, seen Jeff's no. the only dick I've seen is Jeff's, and that was like six or seven times. But and, and how was not, it? Not at work. It's great. Can I get a, a detailed analysis? Nice and straight, um, oh, so circumcised. It was really hard. 
No, I was still a semi at the time. Sort of. Se- wow. Well, eh. Who was around? Who do you think he's the only, cause of that? He's only kind of into you then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was curious. But I don't anything. know. It's like, what? what is the line at this point? Just don't ever. I don't know. Just play it safe. Yeah. So don't who have is your this? dick and balls out unless Even I think people just to. need to double think things because there's it's pretty easy to figure out a line. You just get very comfortable with the people you work mm-hmm. with to the point where like when when this company was a lot smaller, it was a lot easier to fling a fake dick around. No way. Perhaps like fling a real dick around. Someone can misconstrue it, someone who <laughs> isn't in the room might glance it from afar and then it's like so how the, how do I then prove it wasn't my real penis? And then you're screwed. Well, it was pink and had diamonds on it. <laughs> so that's your first indicator. People can uh, tweet us if they want if they're watching this live using hashtag RT podcast. And I see a comment here. It's uh, from Dallas Lynch at the Mega Man. Uh, Is talk- it mean? Talking about uh, no, don't know. It's good. Talking about why you, you got Mister Clean on the podcast. Talking about like um, <laughs> masturbating in front of people. He says. Uh, I can't imagine my dog seeing me do that. Never mind another human. <laughs> right, like the- no, yeah, I get so uncomfortable masturbating in front of my pets. What you do? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's like I, I double think it, and I think they're just basically not going to understand it, so I have to. Also, in moments of intimacy, like even if you were doing like a hot couple thing, like jerking it in front of each other, yeah. at least you're both doing it. And then I feel like if you're Who masturbating so? and two people aren't and aren't into it. They're going to be analyzing all of your worst parts. Oh man, the yeah. The faces, the grunts. And Louis C.K. is not going to have an attractive naked body, let alone him <laughs> with his, oh, like, <laughs> let me do my stand-up bit also. <laughs> you know? I don't know, I think it's the thing with, he's, it was just ama- amazingly successful and probably wanted to feel again. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so like all this, all this talk made me think about it. I, last week I, I saw this website where someone, some professor had transcribed Graffiti that he had found at the uh, Pompeii site, you know, Pompeii was that mm-hmm. village that was like that the volcano eruption And I was reading this so this is like who knows how old this graffiti is. I don't know when Pompeii happened It's like let's say it's a thousand years old and it's weird how Similar graffiti and body talk is between that time and today. Huh. it's like uh, here. I'll, I'll read the first one and it, it says where it was uh, inscribed and you know whatnot so this was inscribed at a bar it says weep you girls my penis has given you up now it penetrates men's behinds. Goodbye, wondrous femininity. Wow. You know what? I relate to that. <laughs> but some lovely what? coming out graffiti. Yeah, and there's another one. It's it was so at, at a bar. Spoken. I screwed the barmaid. Not quite as <laughs> eloquent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's like, like you would, you would, that's like you would expect to see that like at a, like you walk into a bar and like you see like graffiti on the toilet stalls. You see that kind really of stuff. proud and needing to share mm-hmm. with anyone. I wonder who the Louis C.K. of Pompeii was. <laughs> Uh, I have buggered men. Wow, these are really homoerotic. People talking about Mm -hmm. having sex with men. Blondie has taught me to hate dark-haired girls. I shall hat them if I can, but I wouldn't mind loving them. Oh, he doubled back. Why? I don't know. It's it's just it's just really weird to like read this. I'd kill them if I could, but I also want to love them. What does it mean to hat somebody? I don't know. Hack or hat? hat? He said hat to hat somebody. Yeah, maybe it's too off. Perhaps. Oh no. Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79. So it's like almost 2,000 year old graffiti. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hope the it's just Lil 79. Wayne lyrics. <laughs> 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 that'd, be, that'd be a great thing. <laughs> did it sound like I was defending Louis C.K. Oh, a little bit earlier? Yes, it did, Is and you graffiti? were. I would like to point oh, out. Oh wow. That. Yeah, that's graffiti. That's the graffiti. This from one Pompeii. says, pop that pussy like do it. Uh, <laughs> do it. Uh. <laughs> Plagiarism. <laughs> Yeah, I, d- I don't condone the CK stuff. Oh, you really like him? <laughs> I liked his comedy. <laughs> what he did I don't think anyone film. condones no, I was so jerking off in front of people. I think that was yeah. the one uh, person when all the allegations were coming out, that was the one person I really didn't want to have anything come out from. That was the weird. only one I knew was coming, too. Wow. It was like the, the rumor, like when all the stuff was coming, it was like, just wait for Louis CK. I was like, what? Well, what they had already rumored it for like a couple of years in the past. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Mm. I had no idea. Yeah, I, I was talking with Steven about this before we started. Uh, taping here, but my wife and I were talking over the weekend like who's the other one like people always say like it would be so disappointing If you heard anything bad about Tom Hanks like who's another person that would be like at the top of your list and one, ind- independently two, three Steve, Steve Carell We Jim came up with, Carrey. Came the, with the same people I can see that though. Jim Carrey would Jim crush me I wouldn't continue doing anything if I found out he was doing awful Was things. he a hero of yours? Of course. Yeah, he dude. was like my number He's one hero. He's Canadian. Man. He wrote that check for a milli that he cashed. He also had the girlfriend who commits suicide. Yeah, recently that's actually really interesting. Yeah, because there's rumors that he, you know, made her do it, or maybe he killed her or something, and they were into Scientology and well, like. I haven't heard about this. Yeah, it's really interesting. I would read up. I on don't that. know any of the details. I just knew that 
she killed herself. But maybe it was Jim. Jim, if you're watching, did you do it? <laughs> Let me know. In the just tweet us. Hashtag RT <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, he's, he's just watching it. All righty then. He's going to face a trial? I haven't heard about any of Wait, this. Wait, Jim Carrey's going to be on trial? Uh, so <laughs> he will face a wrongful death trial over the suicide of his late ex-girlfriend. Wow. The difference between 2016 and 2017 regarding celebrities is colossal. Truly. Yeah, people thought 2016 was, was bad, bad and shitty. Oh and no, all my favorite celebrities are dying. And Did you now guys hear about so OJ? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's like you almost hope that they die and they're gone before like <laughs> they do anything bad or like any of the bad Rick stuff and Morty happens. With their prince, that blue prince that tried to rape Morty. In the bathroom scene. Oh, oh yeah. my god, that was fucked up, dude. Yeah. And then it's, they, uh... That's such a fucking tease. <laughs> and then so they had that whole bit in the end where they had this box of, of proof of the th terrible things that that prince has done. And then he showed it to this jester and there, whoever was part of their political party and was like, he closed the box and was like, no, it's just the idea of him that needs to live on. You know? Jesus. That's very, very much like, uh, Roy Moore in the Alabama Senate race these days. <laughs> Another one that's everywhere. Fucking crazy! Just wait till the allegations about Steve come out. So has this happened I made before? <laughs> <laughs> has this happened before, where just giant waves of celebrities was taken down by scandal? Like, is this like a repeat of a previous moment in history, or is I'm this sure. the first like it big wave be. of? I feel like, this is like the first big wave. I feel like a lot of these issues wouldn't necessarily have been seen as huge issues fifty years ago. Well, do you think just that like, like mm -hmm. the advent of social media helps give people a voice to where they can all be heard and like stuff like this surfaces easier Absolutely, than before? Yeah. Because yeah. like in the past, you know, maybe who, someone it, who right? did something wrong would just pay people off and they wouldn't be able to connect and they wouldn't know that there's a pattern of this stuff. Definitely harder to get the word out anyway, even if you yeah. wanted to. Mm -hmm. Because I mean and weren't they paying like Weinstein in particular, uh was he not paying like news organizations or he threatening people that were that did have allegations? I know he went to I don't remember if it was if he went to the uh, Prime Minister of Israel or like the past one to try to get this uh, I, I forget the group that he went to to do this but it was a group that specializes in like digging up dirt on people and he went to them and tried to get dirt on everybody that made allegations against him and threatened oh, them. Jeez. Yeah. That's <coughs> like when you're going when you're, when you're approaching like government level stuff like that's super fucked. It's like really yeah. Uh, it's cr and then also it's crazy how much power people in the industry uh, of Hollywood like have to go and get um, a group like that to to just work out your own business yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I hope I have that power someday. <laughs> well, that's why you live in L.A., right? <laughs> You're fucking trying to climb that ladder. Oh God, but I hate it. Don't show it to anyone who doesn't want to see it. <laughs> and he showed it to me, but if I say something, I lose my job. <laughs> it's green. Oh, God. He it's knows, green. He knows his place. <laughs> we call it the mean green and fighting get bad boy. That's what we call it around the office. I'm not necessarily proud of it. <laughs> but he's not not proud of it. Oh, Y'all are disgusting. <laughs> um, There's just got to be so many people in the industry who are, you know, came up in maybe a different time who are just shitting themselves right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I assume that there's still, you know, tons of people who've done bad things who are worried that they're going to be next. I mean, you never know. It seems like it's a different person every day now. Yeah. This, I mean, as sad as it is, all these people are affected. I think this is going to really prevent this happening again. Good. Yeah, it's really good. It's good to make an example of like just disgusting just things happening in power being taken down. All of these of super rich, successful people have been taken down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the shotgun effect. I mean, you want to always side with the the victim and everything. I think, um, and uh, there are sides to this where people are like, "Oh man, is this going to devalue?" Like all these allegations that are coming out, is this going to devalue? Like, um, I mean, if there are some that aren't true, is this going to devalue other people that try to come out? You know, mm -hmm. but I feel like the shotgun effect um, is is definitely going to help, and it's just going to hopefully change the way people, not only in Hollywood but just people in any industry, think in general. You yeah, know, that'd be nice. It's already making Gavin rethink his his penis usage in the team. <laughs> Did you rethink that before My all the allegations against you? What's that? Did you rethink the penis dildo thing and before all the allegations came out? Yeah, <laughs> I don't even like joking about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't want to make light of it. No, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, Poor Gavin. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, and I don't think we're we're making light of it or making making fun of it. You know, no. I think we all no. agree. It's 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 a it's a good thing. It's not a good thing that happens. It's a good thing that people are speaking out and that yeah. you know people who've done this kind of thing are are being taken down. But it's such a like like we already said. I mean, I'm repeating myself now, but it's such a bizarre mindset. I can't put myself in that place to do that kind of stuff. Like, did y'all hear about that uh, subreddit that got banned? Was uh, it the Weinstein effect? <laughs> no, it was a subreddit called Incels. Have y'all heard about this? Mm -mm. No, it was Incels. It stood for uh, men who were involuntary celibate, and it was like this misogynistic group who blamed women for the fact that they couldn't get girlfriends. Jesus Christ! And they would write these awful things about how like society was out against them. And oh, I saw that video that that guy left before he shot a bunch of people. The the young guy who said that like no girls would date him and it was their fault. Oh yeah, they, there was stuff about him in that subreddit yeah. as well. Self reflect a little, you know. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good God! I can't believe that's an actual. That's actually a subreddit. It, that's it was so fucking weird. It's gone. Yeah, that, it's it's good that it's gone. What was the reason know. they got rid of it? What's that? What was the reason they? Um, got rid of it? Was I don't there like know something what, in particular that happened. I don't know what finally. I don't think there was any one thing that made them like just push the them over the edge. Accumulation of them it being shitty like, people. Yeah, I is think there it? were like forty thousand people subscribed to it. It's mm -hmm. a huge deal when a subreddit gets deleted, though, right? Because it very rarely happens. Yeah. Because normally it's it's supposed to be a very like egalitarian free speech yeah, platform, freedom. and then people are reminded that it's a. Private company and they can do what they want just like with Twitter <laughs> with stopping the verification thing It's like people are like no you can't just I mean off of giving what is it giving alt-right people uh, Verification and mm -hmm. they're they're doubling back on that and did people they are like, end verification? Now we'll, we'll never get very on hold I think right yeah unless Rooster Teeth can make it happen <laughs> They uh, ah, nah. yeah, I tweeted something about that uh, About you know them uh, verifying someone who you know promotes violence and hate speech and someone replied to me defending this person and was like well you know they deserve a voice too just because you don't agree with them I was like they have a voice they signed up for an account like yeah. it's it's like when you, once you get the the check mark it's like a legit like legitimizing that voice then it's it's, yeah. di it's a different thing no I definitely agree with them that everybody should have a say no matter what they believe but getting verified getting verified that's Twitter's decision and it's a private company and if they don't want to give me verification that's final <laughs> <laughs> Are you not verified? <laughs> no, there's they nothing hate I us. can do. We've applied countless times. <laughs> it's just a joke. Why? Why'd you want it? Just to feel like I matter on Twitter. I think it's just so cool. <laughs> I get it because people are. I the only reason I want it right now is just because. It keeps. I never really bring it up, but people just keep bringing it up to me, like, "Haha, you're not verified." And you know how hard I was trying. That to get laugh was a little bit of a you. cry. <laughs> it sounded a little bit, a little bit sad. <laughs> but how you like? It would just be. Uh, I don't even. You know what? I don't care at this point. You do. I mean, look at me. Do I look <laughs> like I care about hit? <laughs> I'm trying so hard to get verified before Steve. So hard. And it just will never happen. And I would now. be grateful if you got verified. Do you know how good that would be for the world if I got up before you did? Who would benefit? Oh, Ooh. man. So I can many think people. of one person. So many people. I know one person. He knows one person. We all know a person. You, See, that's like 12 billion people. Though. That's like 12 billion people, dude. Yeah. If you I, think about the latter. I would like to have an intervention for Gus. Go ahead. Your Bitmoji thing. Mm. Oh, it no. It is crap, and you think it's funny. I'm going to send you one right now. It's just Jesus. so bad. <laughs> What's and wrong it, with it? What's wrong with it? I never thought I would want to mute someone who founded Rooster Teeth, co-founded Rooster Teeth. What's wrong with it? What do you- why? Do you use it inappropriately, Gus? Too no. Much, too much, perhaps? No, I mean, define too much. <laughs> what, what, well, here's what is what too happens. much? Here, here's why it's so annoying. I'll tweet something, not at you. You'll just chime in with a bitmoji. Oh, Gus. And then, all of the replies to my tweet, which, you know, I want to read the replies to my tweet. They're actually replying to Gus's bitmoji telling him to See, stop. See, I'm getting you more replies. And all- I don't want them! <laughs> I want you want relevant replies! And all I'm getting is a bunch of people I follow yelling at you for using a bitmoji, and then people yelling at each other for that. It's like, you I talking don't about that here is only gonna make that worse. Gus, rule Guarantee number one. <laughs> I can just mute it. Rule number one with bitmoji is you can only send a bitmoji to someone in a private <laughs> conversation who also has bitmoji. I is think that's the only appropriate <laughs> time to use it. Oh, I, I might use it a bit too wow, much. Wow, <laughs> Are these all of your tweets? <laughs> Good Good on. on the screen. <laughs> look at almost every tweet. Look at the last. Oh, look at the most. Just, <laughs> he thinks he found something up. that's like you so can't. unique that he. Oh, there's pizza guys. Yes, <laughs> Gus. Oh, they don't God. stop. stop. <laughs> good lord, Gus. Oh my God. If that's it, it's so all right. Good. That's not it. Can't be real. How long does this more. go on for? When did you start this? There's more. Well, yeah, there's like more. months ago. <laughs> this Gus, is how like long have you had mid October it? by this point. 
<laughs> three a day, perhaps, Gus? Maybe. I've got, a, I've got a three a day bitmoji habit. It's like trying to break it. 80% <laughs> of your content. It's so good. It's not good. <laughs> it Why do you think it's good? You're so proud of it. There's a bitmoji for everything. <laughs> there, there really is. is. Literally a bitmoji for do everything. Do you think the correct response to my tweet last night was you walking on a rake or whatever it was? <laughs> if what was I had given so I had, so here's, here's specifically why I gave you the rake one. I reply to your tweets via text regularly and you never acknowledge them or respond to them. Mm, sounds like I replied Steve. with a bitmoji and we're talking about it right now. So I know you saw it. We're not talking you about have cr subject. you have created this we're not monster. Talking about this is your fault, Gavin. Fuck we're you, Gavin. only talking friend, about dude. the bitmoji. That completely makes it irrelevant. Well, we're talking about my tweet to you. Can I just get the context of this? What was your tweet that he replied to Rake to? Oh, so uh because I think it's bullshit. Um the current iPhone the iOS 11, they switched the video codec to be like a super efficient one. I think it's called high efficiency video H codec. EVC, yeah. yeah. So it takes up less space or whatever. But if you put that on your Mac, uh, it don't work. Huh. It, it works in iMovie, but it works not in Final iMovie. Cut Pro. It works in QuickTime 10 if you've got High Sierra or whatever. But well, you can't actually do anything with it. And in photos, if you've got like pre-2015 Mac, it just doesn't work at and all. And this was somehow a tweet? I was, made this into a tweet? That, I was bitching that Apple don't support a codec that Apple uses and is a, like a just a standard codec. That's insane. Well. That is absolutely insane. It is insane. That's I mean, insane. they do support it. I find it, it boring. <laughs> it is a little and boring. I thought but Gus was but maybe insane. just trying to lighten up the mood no, no, around no. your tweet, so it makes. Sort I, of I agree. Some, makes a little bit of sense. It was a boring tweet, and I was frustrated. I'm just verifying. And Gus that took advantage of you. Right. It is yeah. in the face. It's classic comedy. It's classic comedy. That's okay. Let, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you use cameras, right? And mm. you film things and you edit things. Very true. Suddenly, I have codec issues a lot. Suddenly, your camera doesn't work with your computer. Annoying. Well, I don't use a Mac. Annoying or not annoying? Was the question. I wasn't specifically talking about Mac. I was just trying to make you feel what I feel. <laughs> Good luck with that. You want to feel something. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> Scream into a steering wheel. You'll be fine. <laughs> um... Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something else here. Bullshit. I wanna remind everyone, this Apple. episode of the Receipt Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning designer templates. You can create a beautiful website or online store with an award-winning template. It's an all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. They've made it easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace. Instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you're able to manage all of your domain and building settings with Squarespace and take advantage of their easy-to-use DNS interface. It's never been easier to sell your products or services online. Squarespace allows you to manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth and get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. In fact, I just got something sent to me earlier today. We had a, a listener who's starting his online store and he sent me like a sample of one of his products talking about how he started his online store using our Squarespace promotion and about how great it was to get his store set up and now he's actually selling stuff and I'm not talking about his product because he didn't pay me. <laughs> Squarespace. <laughs> Squarespace, check out his product. Check out some products, buy some stuff. <laughs> um, so another thing we were talking about before we went live was um, how some of us fly a lot. It's it's a common like recurring theme Have on the podcast. Have we talked about that on the podcast? We've talked about it several times. One percent problems, am I right? And uh, it's just work problems. It's not like I'm traveling the world for fun. True. It's like it's just constantly for work. Uh, but you know the Airbus has that big plane, right? The A380. I don't know if you guys know this. It's like the big double decker plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the first one came out like ten years ago, October 2007. It took its first flight. That that plane is already retired. What? Well, the, it, why? Well, Singapore Airlines didn't want it anymore. They've returned it to the company they leased it from. Were they just not using it enough? I don't or know. Issues, so, perhaps? With fuel the efficiency? Maybe. There's like a mm -hmm. new version of it coming out that's supposed to be more fuel efficient, but after 10 years, it's already like being returned. They're not They're not oh. using it anymore. That's any, any incidences or crashes? Uh, they, they haven't had anything major. They've had a couple like engine failures, but nothing. You ever considered terrible. using that? Um, it's almost like Uber for plane flights. It's like that private thing where it's, I don't know how much it is per month, but you go to uh, the airport and you get on your own, you go through your own little security thing and it takes like two seconds and then they give you a little lounge you can sit in while they check your shit and then you go on your own private plane and they take you someplace. That, talk about 1% problem. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's actually cheaper than, than most people would imagine. It, all, it seems like it, I wouldn't trust that as much as commercial flights, like as far as safety. I guess you always hear about like... Oh, well, no, it's just Buddy Holly. But you always hear about private planes just crashing. Right. And Steve Ray Vaughn, but it was a helicopter. Alpine Valley. Same difference, dude. Same difference. There was a 
So, you know, that, that I'm going to talk about that plane for a little longer. That big plane, the A380. I've never been on one, but they have these big um, suites. Like if you're in first class, it's actually like a suite. Like it's got a bed and like a little desk and a work area, and it's got like a door you can lock. It's like Is that the one that Emirates uses for the- yeah. a lot of uh, like people in Saudi Arabia that hire the more wealthy people there. I think they have A380s, mm -hmm. and they just uh, like make the whole thing just a private bunch of different cool rooms, and okay. they have a bunch of uh, like birds. I've seen those before. Birds, but yeah, they'll put like they take like falcons with them. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> real quick, don't have birds on a plane. They can already fly. But Ever. if they own the plane, they can do what they want. Nah, don't have birds on the a plane. The birds are very expensive. But you know what? When you're in the air and you're flying, you don't eat birds. I shouldn't even be calling them birds because they're more than that. You just don't eat birds when you're going somewhere. I'm flying to Chicago. Don't eat birds. Is it, they're falcons, right? I think they're falcons. The falcon yeah. industry in <laughs> that's even in the Middle East is falcons. incredible. It's very lucrative. Why do you know like about there's... the falcon industry? Yeah, how do you know? We did a why? story on it uh, when I worked at SourceFed. We did a big story, and I did a bunch of research on falcons and uh, their collection. Falcon punch of falcons. It's really interesting. <laughs> I swear. How much they... is a falcon to buy? I feel like there's a falcon that could be a million bucks. Wow. I think there might be. Here's the thing with that. Don't have a falcon that's a million bucks. <laughs> hey, they're very loyal. Are they? Have you had a falcon? They're extraordinarily loyal. What's the depreciation on a falcon? <laughs> how much do they appreciate? Time? Well, once they're out of the parking lot, it goes down. <laughs> it's like half a million dollar falcon. The average falcon price ra can range from two hundred to a thousand dollars, or as high as thirty five hundred dollars. Oh, uh, so wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but if you buy a falcon in Qatar, the price can go as high as two hundred seventy four thousand six hundred dollars. Significantly Jesus. lower than the million dollars. Steve. Well, you could buy Much four falcons. Earlier. There's a rare one out there. I guarantee you, it's worth a million bucks. Guarantee. The rarest What's falcon. His name? What's his name? The rarest falcon. His name's Potty Water. Potty what water. is the Potty rarest water. falcon? <laughs> Are you really looking it up? Yeah. <laughs> Three million. I've been looking up a lot of weird shit lately. Red Most dangerous falcon. places in the world. What's the weirdest porn you guys look up recently? Lowest sea level. <laughs> so that, that actually ties into something else I wanted to talk about. Yes! So uh, you're asking for the weirdest <laughs> porn. So uh, circling back one more time to that A380. So like I said, they have these 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 bedrooms basically, right? Like in first There's class, porn on them. they have signs in them that say that discourage their passengers from having sex. Oh, discourage like, or prohibit? Just dis like you cannot have sex. You're not supposed to have sex. More prohibited than yeah. If I'm in a pl if I'm on a plane and there's a bed and a bedroom and a lock I'm at, on my door, I'm at least jerking it. Absolutely, like, jerking like, it. Like, right. It's like you cannot stop me from having sex on that bed. I'm already jerking off in public seats, aisle 63. <laughs> there was a couple Middle that had seat, sex. Two people beside me, I don't know. I'm jerking off, definitely did you, did, naked in a room by myself. Did you see that video of that that couple on a Delta flight like a couple of weeks ago? They fucked recently, right? And yeah. then no, they didn't get in trouble because they didn't make much noise. I heard because they didn't make much noise. Really. They got off scot free. Uh, yeah, literally, literally. scot free. But yeah, you see like the people in the aisle in front of them going like. <laughs> They've been in there a while. What was the so, position? Oh, it was the bathroom. It wasn't just. I've seen so both. They can I've only seen do bathroom, area. And I've also seen <laughs> in the in their seats. Why this? Why in the suite? And they don't seat. want them to bang there. Is it just? <laughs> I don't know. They don't want people to clean up cum off a plane. I guess. Well, that's their problem. Well, just come inside then, <laughs> and hold the fries. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that being on the side. Um, but I also saw. So you're asking about like weird porn. I saw the other day last week that. <laughs> Pornhub started selling their own sex toys. Huh. Uh, I'm cool with that. On their website, which kind of, it, it makes sense. It's yeah. neato. But it's like, are they used? Do they Does sync up with videos? Concern? It's nothing. Are they like electronic? It wasn't yeah. anything like super <laughs> high tech or electronic. Oh, okay. It was, it was, it was pretty so mundane sex stuff. toys and they're just like, are they like bobbleheads? Or no. do you mean like actual like sex toys? They're not just like branded. Like, Is that a real question, Steve? Unfortunately. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, no, I'm like. a bobblehead wearing a Pornhub shirt. It's just Christy Mac bobblehead. <laughs> and she's just got her dick out. <laughs> she's got... um, no, it's 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 like dildos. You ever consider like buying cool. one of those sex toys where you and your partner from miles and miles away across the country, you can link up and do shit with each other? Did you hear cool. the story about that really today? Cool. Is that why you're bringing that up? No. Okay, I, I, I read a lot of stuff because of the podcast. So like one of those products, what's it called? It's a uh, love sense. Did something terrible happen? No, something awesome happened. Someone realized that the app that controls the sex toy Activates the microphone on their phone and was recording any time that they were using uh, this toy that you, can, that you oh. can control So it's like and the companies come out and said that those audio files never get sent to the internet They're just local on your phone. But why would you want it? Right? <laughs> I guess it has to listen because some of them you can do like voice commands for so it's ah. like listening for voice commands I was but imagining like a how it's done thing where you're like the issue with that too is if 
it's as bad as Siri is with recognizing what you're saying accurately. That's no good. Pull out. Chopping <laughs> dick off. <laughs> All right. That's exactly what I meant. Good God. Are you worried that your phone is listening and serving ads to you? Isn't that a current worry? Mm, yeah. Mm. Like I how guess. some people will be talking about things and then suddenly they'll see an ad for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess. I, I, I feel like you would know, right? Like there was that video that came out last week about supposedly Facebook's listening. Uh, all the time. But I feel like you would know if your phone was listening, wouldn't you? There's an, uh, a thing that Mozilla Firefox is doing. I don't know exactly if it's like a, an extension or something, but it tells you what each, when, whenever you purchase a product or use an app, it'll tell you what information it gets. I think I might invest in that because I don't feel like giving out a lot uh, of information. Hmm. Yeah. I don't use Firefox. Fun little tidbit. Yeah, I'm you not a big Firefox up. fan either. Very cool, guys. I wasn't uh, trying to promote Firefox. It's just a cool, is, cool Is point. that your, uh, your go-to browser? No, I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use Chrome? Yeah. Yeah. Chrome I found a Chrome extension that will limit Twitter to 140 characters. So you for see everyone else, some people's tweets. So it's, it's like it'll it'll stop you from making a tweet longer than two than 140 and it you never optionally can ones. cut. Is there an extension that prevents Bitmoji from showing up in my replies? Uh, I'm sure Let's look. <laughs> stop Bitmoji. Chrome extension and with the 280 is it 280 280 characters yeah. the yeah. most annoying thing with that is when people will like Troll and they'll just like space 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 like ugh, I've seen that so many times I'm like that's ah, not funny. Don't do that. It's just annoying So when you have that extension Gus does it do you still see people's 280 character tweets and it just cuts it halfway through or do right. you never it's see like, them? There's like a red X. Have you ever mm. seen a tweet that was originally 280 characters that got cut off halfway and you Turned off the extension to, to go look it? at that tweet because you thought it was interesting Defeating the whole purpose of it? <laughs> I, I don't enable that function. I only enable the function to stop myself from doing more than mm. 140. Because oh. you're not responsible enough, perhaps? Do you have a lot of vices? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Do you have, like, <laughs> a lot of just things you have to control <laughs> in your life? <laughs> just Bitmoji. That's the only Anger, one. Anger, Bitmoji, the 280 characters. We're up to <laughs> three now, Gus. <laughs> We're learning a lot. About you. Why not just wait until the circle's half filled? Because the circle's not precise. What the fuck is the circle? Why did they get rid of the number? I, I hate the circle. I yeah, think it's precise. Half a circle, you can see what is half. Yeah. Why, why, why did they do that? So that you could see. For why visual, not the number? Visual learners. The number would be much more, like, practical. Better? I got lost on the circle. What circle? There's a circle now that fills up with blue as you're getting to the max character limit, which is completely useless, but aesthetically pleasing, but a number count would be much more practical. And... Oh, it actually doesn't have the number count. No, right. it's a circle that just fills up with a color, like a lighter blue. I like it. I like what they are doing. Well, you're a bit of a cuck, aren't you? Very cool. You like what they're doing? <laughs> Verifying uh, Nazis? Yes, Gus, I do here. like Steven that. Steven likes what Twitter's doing. <laughs> Steven wasn't joking. He meant every word of what he just said. I think that if you're going to verify Anyone. somebody, just verify anybody. <laughs> or me. Okay, well, well, we'll, we'll do that. We'll work on that. If, someone, if anyone from Twitter's watching, get on that. Get on that and me. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> There's, There's no, no point. There's nobody from Twitter watching. Uh, Twitter will be dead soon anyway. You think so? What's going to take its place? I don't know. I feel like Instagram is just like a juggernaut these days. Imagine if Instagram created like a website that was much more like Twitter. They probably would because they have the largest social media fo social media followings are on Instagram, are they not, compared to Twitter? Because of Snapchat? I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah. They already, they're, they're they're already Snapchat. copied Snapchat, right? Yeah, true. So, I mean, it wouldn't take much. And, and it's better. It's so much better. You get more views on Instagram, I think. Do you use just... Instagram a lot? Yeah, I do. What do you post on like what what kind of photos do you post? I post, you know, photos of selfies of myself. I post pictures of the boys, pictures of the girl. Photos of selfies. Of the photos of selfies only, yes, mostly and only. And um I'll use the the live function is really great too. The live function is really great too. <laughs> the live function is really great too. It's just good. It's an all around like the stories are really easy to use and easy to watch and easy to skip through or go back. So you like more than Snapchat? Easily. I barely Do you use, use Snapchat. Snapchat. It's inconvenient, I find. It's slower loading. It's like you feel like you're using an older software as well that just doesn't look as Snapchat current. is slow as fuck. Right, it is. I don't get that. Loading someone's little 10 second video is like, all right, all right. And then watch it, like, that wasn't worth it. No, not at all. I like Instagram stories, but I don't like how all their ads are uh, compressionless and lustless and look supreme, mm. but then the people's videos look like compressed crap. Like they but it also does depend on the phone you're using. Because if you're using an old phone, bad quality, bad compression, bad codec. It all comes it's, back. It's, not, it's, it's not all coming codec. circle. The ads look damn good on there, though. Mm -hmm. You notice that? I really don't use Instagram. Oh. 
I can't believe it. You should. We learned a lot about Codex to. doing that short film we did. We didn't realize what uh, a D is it a DCP? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For like yeah, for God, delivery. that is a bitch. Yeah, it took us like four hours to get that made, and then we were on our way to the premiere, and they told us that it wasn't going to be done. What did you shoot on? A DCP C200. is like the package that. You take to the theater and yeah. they ingest that into the projector and that's what they show. Yeah. It's so like when you watch when you go to the theater and you watch a digital movie, and if it's not like analog, if it's not a reel of film, it's a DCP. And package. to make that DCP, we had to render in uh some I think it's H two six four HQ or four 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 four. I don't exactly remember. But even that, I had to go online and buy like this thousand dollar program because it's I was mm -hmm. on a PC, I wasn't on Mac, and Autumn's Mac was just it's a piece of shit. So it's <laughs> like I had to render it in time for this, and then I uh, had to spend a thousand dollars on that because for some reason the theater only accepts H two six four DCPs, or the DCP place only accepts H two six four. It's like why does why is there any difference for anything? Like why can't so it all just be one? Have the file until that day. Correct. Mm -hmm. You all almost delayed your screening, right? Like, Dude, you yeah. Like, start late. We had to just play it off of HDMI from Autumn's laptop. Really? <laughs> yeah. So we paid all that money for the DCP and that program to not even use the DCP. We have the DCP <laughs> now, though. And <laughs> while people were lined up down the street on both sides to go in humble brag into the theater for the premiere, we realized we don't have it at all. So we thought we could maybe do like a live show, an, an interpretation of the movie. Oh, God. <laughs> on stage. And that would have that been the most been embarrassing good, thing. Though. But, but luckily, good. we I, I had like, Autumn's laptop. I liked, uh, I liked your short film. Really? Yeah, yeah, thank you. It was good. <laughs> Where can people see it? On Rooster Teeth First, that's for sure, or the Sugar Pine 7 YouTube channel. Yep, I see it right here. If you sign up for Rooster Teeth First, make sure that you keep keep subscribed after that first month. For at least two. <laughs> um, I thought it was... It, I didn't think you all... Oh, God. I don't, I don't want to spoil anything in it. Uh, no, I won't say it then. Spoil it. Do say it. Say it. I, I didn't think you all would show the monster so clearly. In like, daylight. In daylight. I was like, wow. It was we a purposely risk. defied that, yeah. We really liked how the makeup team, uh, what the, the work they did. Yeah, so good. we just thought it was uh, interesting. Plus, we're, we're big slasher fans. Um, and the movie's like a slasher film, but with a monster instead of a killer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just uh, we figured they show the killer, so why not show... You know, the monster. Mm -hmm. And didn't no one ever in, shows like a monster during the daylight. Didn't you shoot in like it was just a few days or something? Three, Three days, days, yeah. There were, um, it was uh, definitely illegal hours. Yeah, like we <laughs> worked three days straight. Like, can I even say how long we worked or should I just not? I mean, I, well, you know what? I paid people overtime because I had to open up another credit card. True. So, <laughs> But far too many hours than we should have with not nearly as, uh, as many breaks as we should have. And I mean, everyone was on board. The beauty of it was that we had a team that was all as fired up and like willing to put in the hours as we were. So everyone considered it a passion project, and it like worked out. Yeah, I guess. that's that's. I like those shoots. Though. I've done a few shoots where it's like just a bunch of people who all want the same thing. They want it to be great. Yeah. And it, instead of having to go by all these rules, it's like, hey, you want to just take like a five minute lunch instead of an hour? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. Let's exactly. back on. Yeah. Otherwise, like it, it wouldn't have been able to be done. Yeah. No, days. absolutely not. Not at all. And we still had to cut so many corners. There were like a lot of. A lot of things in the plot that just didn't really like add up. Scenes we literally had to cut like day of going, ah, we can't shoot that. What's more important? What can we do to work around it? So it was really like not guerrilla shooting, but at the same time there were And then there were also shooting. scenes that we needed to cut out in post, but we realized we had a time frame that we had to meet, like um a time limit on the video itself, so where it would be worth people seeing it. Mm -hmm. Which we had to hit like twenty two or something minutes. But I think it, what was wanted was like around thirty, twenty five to thirty. It was but, already short enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh when's the next one? Tomorrow. <laughs> we want to hours, right? <laughs> we want to wait a couple months, probably two or three months before we start doing Even something like that again it, because yeah. that is just uh it's a nightmare. It's truly it consumes a nightmare. most of our creative energy which we need to allocate entirely to everyday shooting, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Have did y'all like take downtime from your from your normal shooting for that kind of stuff? Like did just like the did days it really that we were gone. Yeah. Just, yeah. just the days we were gone. Just the days we were gone. Prep like pre-production now, we didn't take any days off for, for vlogs or anything, but um, have you ever noticed when you work on like a passion project, you go back to the normal day-to-day -day work and you're not as fulfilled by it? Like you work on something you really want to for so long, because um, I was editing the, the woods for quite a while, and then I suddenly went back to editing vlogs and it's just, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was just unfulfilling and it felt like I was creatively drained. I, I had like a weird inverse of that the other day where um, we had this big like offsite meeting that we have once a year where I mean, we go over a lot of stuff. And at the end of the day, I was like, oh, you know, there's really some stuff I'm curious about. So I spent like 
three days building spreadsheets and charts. It was like, and I was like totally into it. I was like, I'm all about this spreadsheet. Like, I don't want to do anything on camera. I don't want to do anything creative. Like, fuck yeah, this spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm gonna spend eight hours all day today, just like nonstop. And it was like, and then when I'm done, I'm like, yeah, that was that's really good. Like, look at all this. I figured all this shit out. I figured all this data and out. You had like, an existential crisis. Like... You're just like, no more spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe do a bar graph. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I feel like it's, it's somewhat similar where you like get really into something like your headspace is just like it strikes you just right. And it's like that's all you want to do. And then mm -hmm. like when I was done, I was like, well, I got to go edit that video. And mm -hmm. I'm really not into that right now. Like, yeah. Well, for the first while, like the SP7 videos we we're making were that. And I think we just got used to doing it. So now it's not as fresh as it was. So when we got to do something that was so fresh and like bigger scale, going back to it was just like, ah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I realized um. I could just make the videos we were doing recently more cinematic, and that would kind of quench my thirst. And is it? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. It's fun trying to work out the story. So, so Little things. Dane Bird on Twitter, at Sad Panda Bird, is asking, what was the amount of film not used in the final cut of the woods? Myself and a lot of others wished it had been twice as long. Mm. God, the we would need twice the amount of time. Shots that weren't used. <laughs> Do we, um, we almost used everything we shot. Uh, there was, so we had, we used a C200, um, for the majority of it, and then, uh, a small skeleton crew went out and shot other things with the, the 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. There's just, there's no comparison between the 5D Mark IV and the C200, though. We and almost didn't just, use, like, the, the shot of the roadkill. We spent, like, 500 bucks on this roadkill, put it out in the middle of the road, shot it with a 5D Mark IV, and it looked like shit. We still put it in the film because we were like, ah, we're not wasting 500 bucks on that. What was shit about it? Um, it's... Like, it's the quality compared to the other camera was it just doesn't so have different. like the C200. I feel like it shoots. Um, it has sort of an HDR effect where the sky is not as overexposed when you're shooting um, on the ground, and it's just a lot more clear in general. It's like a dynamic range thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, the 5D just it was so blown out in the background that the yeah. I had a better sensor overall. So I what I did is I just cut before or cut after it showed all the stuff in the background towards the road. And I so think that's what people always. Overlook and is that like they just look at stats like the resolution like oh, it's 4k and this one's 4k God, It's no, like yeah. dynamic range. It is what makes shit look way more professional and mm -hmm. not shot on a, a phone and the picture yeah. profile like The um these cameras right here have an amazingly flat picture profile if you use it obviously But like they're incredible. I love the what are the they black called? magic ones? Black magic, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so flat like they immediately like raw look much more cinematic than like even a five. I'm trying to get Rooster Teeth to give us a budget to shoot on an RE65. <laughs> Ooh, baby, those are so good. Holy shit, they're amazing. Like, I feel like it's rent. You would it would cost five thousand dollars to rent that in a day. So I think RT can probably afford that, right? We'll give you a couple hours. <laughs> we got some Phantoms. Mm. That'd be cool. Are they in? Are they in this like area? In this building? Yeah. No. Oh, they're in Britain. Great no, Britain. No, no. I hide them. England. Are they're they in really? a different England? place every week. No, I'm just kidding. Well, Great Britain. Nicholas Cage has them right now. <laughs> Damn it. He's on a heist. We Do you rent those out? No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't I mean, even use them. To us, yeah, we use them all around here all the time. Are those cameras? Do you, have, do you still have the same one that you had from a while ago? Yeah, we got one that's seven years old and one that's three years old. The one that's seven years old, does that still hold up? Um, it's kind of, it's breaking a little bit. Really? Okay. Yeah. Mm. It runs good for like two hours and then it and then overheats. The over here. one that's three years old, is that an updated version of that other one? It's the 4K version of the other one. Oh, so it's just as expensive. What cameras I, are used yeah. on um, <laughs> Million Dollars Butt? Uh, that's the, uh, 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 Scarlet. Red. Yeah, the oh, yeah, Scarlet. Scarlet. Epic. Scarlet. Oh, yeah. Oh, you I use went, Epics? I'm not sure what sense they use. What's the... Is it yeah, the, is, it, uh, the, is it a dragon? They went from dragon yeah. to the... Something else? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're Some, so modular, I never really know what the How do we is. get a couple dragons from you guys? And just how do we give those to us? <laughs> when I went to uh, CES I a like few years ago, when that Phantom 4K <laughs> came out, yeah. uh, I stopped by the, the booth where they were showing them off, and like I was, I was there like trying to get information because we knew we wanted to get one, and like nobody there would give me the time of day. They were like, who are you? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, we're looking to, we want to buy a Phantom for, like, make some internet videos. And they were like, what? <laughs> and they like, literally, like, salespeople would just, like, turn and, like, walk away. Like, no, like, I'm what? serious. I'm not wasting your time. <laughs> Give me the so information. Funny. How much are those cameras? It's like $100,000, right? They can get pricey. Oh. Yeah, I think the wow. the one we got, the 4K at the time was, like, 150 and then it's, like, 20 for the mags each, and then, like, 10 for the reader. You could get a Jaguar F-Type for that and then you crash get, it. You get a Falcon. What's a Falcon? It's oh, a bird. the bird. Yeah. You can get a pretty rare Falcon <laughs> for 100 grand. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me tell you're you. You're the self-proclaimed falcon expert. You get a quarter of a His falcon. Name? Potty water. Junior. <laughs> Oh, um. Yeah, they don't uh, they don't mess around. Everything about those cameras is expensive because there's one cable that comes with it. It's Ethernet on one end, normal Ethernet, and then there's like a Fisher connector that just plugs into a Phantom. But because it's a custom cable, it's like yeah, it's five hundred bucks. If you could oh, use any camera on a film that you that, any camera that exists, what would you use? A mirror. What's that? What's that? It's the uh, successor to the Alexa. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Oh, the Ari. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! I thought that was the sixty-five. Is it the 65? Well, the, the Alexa was just 2K, but it was really nice looking. Sorry that I'm talking about cameras with you guys. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it. Up. Honestly, I haven't. I used to work in the film industry and it was like just when reds were coming in, but then I, I haven't done that in like six years. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of out yeah, of date now. You'd be better, talk, better off talking with like yeah. the guys who actually film shit. So. I'm, out, I'm up to date on Phantom still, but yeah, the, 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 the mirror time right. stuff. Is it? Mm -hmm. Sweet. I, I had to look it up. What is it? A mirror. A M I R A. And that's their best a camera? Mirror. It looks like it. That in my two seconds of Google searching, <laughs> it looks like it. Of course, I'm sure the comments will prove me wrong. Um, but the Alexa, like, they're not cameras that people would just buy for online. I think like the base package on the Ari Alexa was like 65 grand or something. It's like for a body. You would probably see a movie in the theaters that was shot with a camera like that. Yeah. They shoot Game of Thrones on it. Mm -hmm. Same with the, uh, the Alexa, right? Or is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the Alexa yeah. was. Yeah. Like was... all of Game of Thrones. I'm not even sure about the last season, but like. Definitely season one to five. You can't watch it in 4K because they didn't shoot it in 4K. Mm. They just wanted the dynamic range of the Alexa. I think like one of the Guardians of the Galaxy was shot on the Alexa as well. Yeah, I think Avengers was as well. Mm -hmm. Nerds. Nerds. <laughs> so did you hear, um, we were, I was talking about NAB and then made me think about Las Vegas. Did you hear that, um, was it AAA launched an autonomous shuttle to drive people up and down the Las Vegas Strip? No. What? And then he, on the first day it immediately got into a crash. Wow. So wait, it was on the roads. Yeah. Oh, and it was, it was supposed to be like to show off autonomous vehicles, and immediately it got into a wreck. How did oh. it get in the accident? Was it someone it else's was, fault? It was in traffic, and it was behind another vehicle, and then to the side of it, a big like eighteen wheeler with a trailer was backing up, and the car could sense that there was another vehicle coming because it was in traffic. It didn't know what to do. So it tried going forward and then it couldn't get out of the way. And then the trailer just backed up right into it. Okay. So it wasn't its fault though. Right. But it could have. It, it just couldn't have troubleshooted the. Right, it didn't honk its horn. It didn't uh, do anything to alert. Oh. Right. It's like it, it froze. Like the, it should be able to honk its horn, but it didn't think to do it in that situation. <laughs> oh no. Gotta teach them aggression. Right. <laughs> so it's like immediately. Did you to yell at its steering wreck, wheel perhaps? Right. Just scream at the steering wheel. <laughs> How far are we from like. Fully autonomous cars where we don't have to drive anymore. Are we like 10 years from that? Do you I not like driving? Mm. Um, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> also, how far are we from um, developing uh, a code of ethics for touching robots in weird places? Oh, we talk about this every now and then. Really? Because I'm yeah. down to. Because there has to be like, I mean, maybe there doesn't have to be. I don't know what people are going to decide in the future. But when AI gets so intelligent um, that you just feel like it's a real person... Who's to stop someone from molesting a robot, you know? Right. To hard and is that it. molestation because it's just a device? These are the things we think about at SP7. Right, Do but you then humanize like, the robot or When not? does the device become, like, if it's intelligent enough, like, it, does it have How do you rights of its own? artificial intelligence, though, so it's like, you know what I mean? I understand where you're coming from, but I'm <laughs> is asking it truly question. conscious? Right. Exactly. I don't know. But it's like, but the... <sighs> I mean, we how, teach how can babies? I work this without getting too crass? Um, like, would... Okay, this is going to be really crass. <laughs> Like so, what about like a dog, right. or an animal, like a pet? You, like you wouldn't do that. Can't to, fuck a dog no. to that. Like, but it's like Unless you wouldn't you say to. that a dog has a soul or a consciousness, right? It's well, not on the same level as a human. You can't make a dog. You can't make. I, a dog. I think. Could you make? Incorrect. A dog? You can make a dog. Bullshit. I've looked into a dog? cloning my dogs when they die, and it you was how do you actually? A dog it would be from, fifty grand. You're making wow. a dog from a dog. You can't just oh, come you, up with a dog, and that's likely not even. You're right. So I feel like. If you can make it, then all bets are off. So then you don't care about clones. But and it's also clone about from something that existed already. You can't just like a clone is already a secondary so, okay, thing. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. But I you're saying that if a robot had a whole birth cycle where it went from a baby to an adult, then you would have a problem with it. Because it still I don't think would have consciousness. If but I a dog made does. a robot yeah, I agree. and a robot just came up with an offspring, yeah, I would feel bad about doing anything to that. Really? Because I didn't make 
I'm also. I don't, I don't want to molest but, but, a robot. Gavin, no, no, no. We're if just... that if that robot child, like if that robot in the first place was able to have a child, that means it was programmed to be able to have a child. So that's still something that. You know what I mean? It wasn't like natural. Yeah, it would have to come up with the child itself for me to have an issue with it. If I but gave it like it to a have birth a child, cycle, it would have to be programmed to have a child. So therefore, it's just an extension of the original created. Will they have robot. children AI in the future? Well, you you would think AI would iterate on itself and improve itself, right? Like if it doesn't have a physical form, if it's something that exists as software only, surely like, it would be doing that every second. Right, it would constantly that. iterate, improve, and mm -hmm. replicate. So I don't think it's like a child necessarily, as it is co independent copies that continue to improve and iterate on itself. Oh no, I just meant a specifically child-designed AI for perverts. <laughs> Why do you ask, Steve? Oh, so why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> Where they have like... Well, I mean, actually, that already exists, right? Like, they use... Have you, haven't you seen that? They use um, this software they call Sweetie. Does it do like to, a voice that's like, no, stop. Well, to, like, to, draw to, in, to catch him? child Where's predators. Where's my dad? So they, you're saying... It's, it's you, like this... this this 3D oh, rendered like an online thing. little girl who like uh, they say that people like currently people it's a very manual process where people will run it in order to try to trap child predators but they're working on iterating it to where it can go out on its own and, and it, catch predators right. that way because it's like they're constrained by the number of operators who can run it at one time huh. Annie, like, the little child predator catcher. Right. Like but what if it gets too aggressive movie. and it starts to like raking in people who aren't interested? And what if like, it starts to become itself. a bit of a pedophile itself? <laughs> So you're saying ch there should be child robots to wean people off? Kevin, no, that is not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> no, that's originally saying, what I thought as well. I don't know where the market's gonna go. Who knows? It is an interesting 20, 50 years, people conversation are... because people are offended by stuff today that wouldn't have been offensive in the 80s or 70s maybe as much. But it's like, will touching a robot eventually say so much about you as a person that we start to see it that way? It's like, oh, you might as well be touching a... I think a to some degree, to, to some honest, degree I think sure. even if... Yeah. If in some weird reality they had children robots that were used to alleviate like the the you know pedophiles, that's then still, it's still that wouldn't that's not the reason pedophiles are pedophiles. It's because of a it's a power thing, right? When it comes down to it, I, I, for a I lot of it probably. But I mean, I'm I'm only, sure. sorry, I was only <laughs> you're looking like right at me. That. Like I don't know. So I feel like the robots would do know what we're talking about. <laughs> there's honestly there's so much stuff that I can't relate to in any way. I, I can't even try and get in the mind of a kitty fiddler because <laughs> fiddler. I, I can't relate to any of it. I just think it's that like not sexy at all. I don't understand what I think that like to some degree yes, but there's also like I'm sure a majority of them that are just genuinely sexually attracted to kids, and then there's also a power thing. I think there's like probably a <laughs> mixture of both, and that having those to wean them off would kind of also. Make it a little bit more okay than it already is. I don't oh. think that's a good idea. I, I, at all. Yeah, I don't think that should I think happen. I think that, that I think that the behavior. Oh, I don't yeah, think that it will happen. I just behavior. don't think it, even if it did, it would help. There are some no, things that should be cold turkey. <laughs> right, like that. That should not be on the table. Cigarettes, at all. wean yourself off. Kids, stop. <laughs> will your sponsors be okay <laughs> with this? I, I'm waiting. I got to do another ad read, and I'm, I'm waiting to get somewhere else so we can segue can off. Can I of this. quickly pee? Is that a thing? Yeah, that would actually it. help. Oh, him why get did you to pee before this? Oh, I, the two beers have gone right through me, and I'm about to urinate in your pants. You got two more to get through as well. All right, go for it. Where's here. James? Maybe here. James can take his place in the here. meantime. Here, here, you gotta get back. James, here. James, he'll show up out there. James is gone. So someone will take you. <coughs> While uh, Kib's doing that, let me read this thing here. <laughs> <laughs> One of my never this episode of the Received Podcast is also brought to you by Upside. If you travel for work, listen up. That business trip you're about to book, do it over at Upside.com and I'll give you two of the best gifts anyone will give you this holiday season. The first is a free pair of Bose SoundLink wireless headphones so you can have some peace and quiet on your business trip. And second, I'm going to give you the gift of a better business travel experience and that's what you get when you book your next business trip over at Upside.com and here's why. Only Upside has customer service specialists who look out for you every step of the way on your business trip, handling any problems that might pop up. Okay, now here's how to get your free pair of Bose SoundLink wireless headphones. Book your first business trip at Upside.com and use code ROOSTER, and the Bose SoundLink wireless headphones are yours free. That's code ROOSTER at Upside.com to claim this gift. Bose SoundLink wireless headphones, just for trying Upside. It's just one more way Upside is looking out for you and helping reduce the stress of business travel. It's Upside.com. You deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase is required, so see site for complete details. And you know how much we talk about traveling and business travel. Go check out Upside.com. Seems like a great service. Did you go to Extra Life? I didn't. I missed it this year. You got I was feeling, no, no, I was feeling a little was bad it cold? Was on it too Saturday. Cold outside? 
I was feeling a little bad. I'm, I'm gonna explain. Are you gonna fe- keep fucking cutting me Why off, or do you want me to explain? With a bit emoji. <laughs> um, I was I was feeling a little bad on Saturday, and then I still have like this residual guilt over the cheese oh, master cheese stuff. Master? Right. Uh, I got really drunk two years ago, and like I derailed the whole thing. But you came last year, right? I was I was traveling. I was on oh, a plane last so you're year. You're never gonna go. No, again. I'll come back. But it's like I, w- I want to get away from that, maybe a little more, and then we'll we'll, we'll we can I can make a return. I had a bloody good time on it. I see, I watched it. It's it was like a. Uh, it's just so, it's like everyone just goes ape shit. Everyone just loses all their inhibitions soberly. For Congrats on raising all that money, by the way. Yeah, thanks. How much of that gets written off? <laughs> it's not a write off. We never just, take it. It's like everyone who donates writes it off, I guess. Yeah, they write it off. So all of it. Oh, very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, I, I, it seemed like a big goal. I wasn't sure if, uh, if we'd be able to hit it, but everyone pulled it through. was, it was great energy in the room. There was like at every point I was there, they were like, 50 people in here mm-hmm. and the set was so much bigger this year. It was top. I saw a picture of someone puking into someone's mouth Oh, that'll happen. That's that what that was. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were baby birdie. baby birdie The funniest thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life from Rooster Teeth and there's there have been a, a bunch of things was Blaine getting too drunk during uh mm. What was that where he got way too drunk and then like just an interview up? with his drunk self? Oh yeah. god The me versus drunk me. Oh mm-hmm. wow. God, that was so funny. I'd like to see that. He just they did a clip did you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? No, I'd love to see that. It's of Blaine they do this show where they get drunk and then they talk to themselves mm-hmm. afterwards. So they'll like ask questions and then they'll get drunk and then they'll answer the questions when they're drunk. And Blaine got too drunk and he just immediately tries to answer questions, just throws up everywhere. Oh, that's amazing. Did you know that was going to happen? No, he just got too drunk. Um, he got too drunk. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. I feel like you'd have to get so drunk to make that entertaining so that you're not just like, well, I remember. It was a very short video. Question. Are you a good drunk? I imagine you to be a terrible one. Actually, I am always pervert. twice as drunk as you think I am. I'm a, like completely normal drunk, I think. Like you wouldn't even know that I'm drunk when I'm destroyed. <sighs> Anyways, that's, that's a non-fun think, right? question. Non-fun, non-fun answer to that question. You need like a, a camera. That way you can see yourself. You ever watch like, footage of yourself when you're drunk? Um, I don't know if there is any footage of me actually See? drunk drunk. You gotta watch really? it. Truly, really. but I mean, I've been told so many times that people are like, I didn't even know you were drunk. I'm like, I'm fucking destroyed, yeah. Are you coming to the holiday party this year? When is it and where? Oh no, we're oh, not, let's, because let's, let's we, not say when and where. Could you put uh, <laughs> the address and what time? If you're asking me for that information, I have no idea. I will, I'd probably know, because I think I heard that we have to pay for our own flights, so that's not happening. You mean we're not flying you out to party? Yeah! How? Dude, I don't How I mean, dare let's do it in LA then, come to LA. I did one year. I went to the full screen one. Let's have our own party. We'll have one in the same night, and let's, we'll see who shows let's up. Let's meet halfway. Okay. Between LA. What is and exactly halfway between LA? Missouri. And LA? No. That's not a real place. I just watched Misery. <laughs> you got some laughs. So. Jesus. It's gotta be somewhere in Arizona, <laughs> right? Good movie. Uh, a good movie. Los Angeles. Are you looking up the distance or the halfway mark between LA and Austin? Yeah. I what? bet it's Missouri. It's not Missouri. It's either Missouri or it's. Wait, Los Angeles, Austin, it's not Missouri. No, it's not at all. It's not even in the right direction. <laughs> it's okay, so there's Arizona, Nevada. Oh, it's it, Texas. It's Maine. Maine. <laughs> it's Mange. Wait, what would it be? Oh, this is gonna bum me out. It's <laughs> Kansas City. It's Arizona. It's in Arizona somewhere, I'm sure. It's uh it's like at the Arizona New Mexico border. Mm. So what's good? There. What's good? What's good? Uh, let's see. We go to just pay for your own flights. Just come to the Lordsburg, party. New Mexico. Kevin, I have or opened up a new credit budget. card. Take the budget, the budget. budget for your next camera that you're not going to get, and go to the party instead. All right, that we could do. Kevin, I have three hundred dollars in my bank account. <laughs> do we not? I don't. Know. <laughs> nah. There's some questions I want to ask you, but not on a thing. To ask like, me anything. You can ask me anything right do now. Do it. AMA. How much why, money do you not have? Why do we? Have <laughs> why do what? Well, is it like, let's figure it out. You just open like a credit cards to make a thing? No, I had to open a credit card with a with a big um, limit so I could pay people over time for the woods. Okay, okay. And then I, I already had uh, just an incredible amount of debt before then. Anyway. <laughs> you had a, got a great car though. Had. <laughs> so what was the car? I couldn't really tell from what was left of it. But it, it looked was like a, a jack. It was a, a good Honda version Civic. of the F-Type. So. So you, you're, you, you like cars? Yeah, actually. Very big. Oh, you? No, I don't drive. Do you have a license? No. <laughs> Interesting. Really, the only I, other person you, I know from the UK doesn't drive. Also, Gizzy doesn't drive. So you're not a big uh, a car well, guy at all. I mean, depending on where you live in the UK, you don't have to drive. There's public transport everywhere. Well, there's public transport everywhere in America. LA, too. definitely yeah, not. Yeah, you yeah. never want to take the public transport in LA. Yeah. But there's Uber. That's public transport the here. <laughs> Just the people are wrong with it. I would drive. I I want to make sure I. I don't want to drive on this visa that I'm on. 
Why is that? Because I might accidentally break the law and then get deported. You think oh. if you got into an accident, you get deported? I wouldn't. Hey, think if so. I like lost concentration and ran someone over, I'd be. I'd Just ruin don't my do life. That. Yeah, because you do one wrong oh. thing when you have a visa like that, and it. You have to go yeah, home, you right? Don't have a lot of rights on him, and I and I wow. want to just prevent risk at all costs. So <laughs> I'll be a passenger, <laughs> as long as I wear a seatbelt and don't, you know, open container. Then I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll be fine, honestly. I think it's more of a. I'm sure I would. Be a honest. worry that wouldn't even none of the, none of those issues would arise. It's just. Most I mean, I never thought I would crash my car. Well, now look at me, full on. <laughs> True. What What was it like in the moment? Just the worst ever. So. I, uh, I feel like you've talked about this on a podcast I haven't watched. Just ours, yeah. I flipped a few times, and then I was upside down, and then I remember putting my um, hands down. Eight times to be uh, exact, wasn't it? Eight times flipped? No, definitely not eight times. It was like, it was, a, it was a decent amount of times I flipped, though. And so I ended up upside down, and I put my hands down on the glass, and that's the only reason that I got like kind of worried is because I looked at my hands, and they were all bloody, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, something's gone wrong. But uh, I felt fine in the moment, so I unhooked my uh, my seatbelt. I was like, oh shit! And he was upside, upside down, upside by down. the way. Tried like, to kick out the, or tried to push out the door to my left, completely blocked in. I was like, this is fucking the worst thing ever. I started getting claustrophobic. Then I um, moved the door to my right, uh, or wait, would it be? I moved the other door that I didn't move at first, yeah. and it was also blocked in. I was like, ah, this is just getting worse and worse. This is how I'm gonna die. How fitting! And then I kicked the door open, and I uh, got out. So it felt a lot. Have you guys seen Unbreakable? Yes. Yeah. So I just can't imagine the moment where, because I s assume if if you're living like a slow motion moment where it's like, well, I've lost control here. Let me try and correct it, and then to the point where it's like, I can't. I'm gonna let go, and I'm gonna put my hands up. <laughs> it's mm. like that must be a scary moment. It didn't feel slow motion at all. It was the whole quick. thing. It was um, quick, yeah. I just uh, it was like Bug at whip, me. whip, I keep... whip, whip. I've and seen then... that before, but that is just a shocking mess of metal. <laughs> yeah, the it held up. I realized. Where um, did the front wheel go? Uh, it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my driveway. Perpetual motion. The front yeah. wheel's disconnected, yeah. yeah. Hopefully I can sell some of this. I sat in it for a video and it was just like remarkable how, like believe it or not, his little section was relatively, you know, unscathed. Like he had a good little area here, not too much wreckage, like pieces of metal sticking out in his eye or anything. I was like, God, this is car luckily had a roll cage. If it didn't, he would have been. How old is it? Oh, had rollover good. production. Like what protection. Year, what year is that car? Seventeen. Roll cage, roll oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't I know mean, when. Cool they... in some ways, and very <laughs> yeah. uncool in other ways. No, but... I'm glad it, it did a great job there. I feel like I should tweet at them. To crash the current year is always preferable, I guess. Yeah, truly. Because I mean, yeah. ima imagine if that was like a 2004 or something. You should have taken a picture of you just right beside the car, like, <laughs> and then took a picture at them, and then oh, put like their them? logo, yeah, exactly. like, like it's an ad. <laughs> Pretty good. That'd be amazing. Can vouch. Maybe then I wouldn't go bankrupt. Who knows? I'm glad think you lived. Yeah. Yeah, me too. In some ways. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that, right? Like, do you do you think that the people who are like on the factory line making cars, they ever wonder, like, the, the guys putting like the final finishing touches on a car, like, I wonder what's going to happen to this car? Yeah. It's like, where, what's the ultimate fate of this brand new vehicle? I think about that with food a lot. Where <laughs> I had uh, Is someone can eat this. Like some some oh. of the worst some of the worst unhealthiest food in the UK. I would consider a pot noodle just terrible. Pot noodle? Yeah, it's like, so like ramen noodles, in a way. It doesn't even like, sound it's good. It's got like powder and shit, and you pour it in. It's like ramen like corn. in America, Mr. Noodle in Canada. Yeah. So, but like, there's always like some veg to make it, I guess, less. Not even actual veg. Little just peas and little, carrots. Like, little green pieces of just. Yeah, green flavor. pieces. There's yeah, green yeah, pieces, yeah. and there's corn. And I'm always like opening up the thing. There's a pot noodle. Yeah, the great chicken noodle. They're, they're terrible for you, but they're delicious. They're love so them. good. I love them too. But I'm it always just, like, wait, does, does one other thing, can we pull that back up? Does one of the things say no pots? Like at the very bottom? It does. It's like a pot with an extra. Do not it. boil. Pot uh, noodle. Yeah, it means you do not to, put in pot. You don't have to decan it. You just pour water in it. <laughs> no. But there's always corn in it. And I'm think I just look at it and I think, when was this corn? Like when was this on the cob? <laughs> Years what ago. year was that? Was it this decade? Because you how know it's, you it's like corn? dry and it's it's almost fossil. Guess we gotta look up how long we can keep corn. Yeah, and it's the same with like tinned chicken like you can actually buy a whole chicken in a can that's disgusting Ugh. yeah and like, dump it out it's an entire it's chicken like, that's just been de-meat deboned yeah. is there I not canned it I, bread i think like when was that a chicken walking around dehydrated vegetables that? store that's well if hermetically sealed in the absence of oxygen plan on a storage life of eight to ten years wow. like when was that pea growing oh it looks so oh. wrinkled and just <laughs> the life has been Why sucked out of it entirely us from eating it though oh, i just can't stop i i, I import pot noodles they're so good well we have like we you have versions of it here. You don't need to do that. Ramen too, but 
There's a special flavor to a chicken and mushroom pot noodle. Oh, really? Chicken yeah. and mushroom? Yeah. That sounds delightful. I'll give you one. Do you have one here? Uh, not on me, no. But in, in, in my house. Where's your house? Could you tell me the address yeah. and your social security number? Down the road. All right. Why don't you bring some for us? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think to bring a lot of pot noodles. Maybe Bloody we need to make a little run. To too. Is it? Mm. I'm terrible for you. What else do you import? Oh. You have like tea. Chocolate. English chocolate. Mm. Tea, I d well, Yorkshire tea sent me all the tea I'll ever need in the world. So wow. I don't really need to Doesn't do that, that go anymore. bad after a while though? Not at the rate I drink it. Okay. Fair play. <laughs> Come Fair on, play Gus. I've you been trying to learn how to put uh, milk in my tea. Like oh, it's so good. Well, Just I put gray cream tea, in right? it sometimes even. Or black tea? Is that what you put it in? Yep. Black, yeah, black orange tea. pico with just milk or cream. It's really good. It seemed really disgusting to me. But, uh, really? What's disgusting about it? I just you mean like coffee. dairy and hot water. It's basically well, it's like coffee. Yeah, coffee. That's exactly coffee. Yeah, but it's got beans and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just forget you Think put, about it it's like not coffee. Just leaves. Like tea is just like leaves. Like you put some leaves in, in your so water. So why and does take it get it gross when you go from beans to leaves with milk? From beans to Do you think that was just like how you're the, raised? The, the, there's more to it. Like yeah, when, I it's, mean, when it's like a milk on bean. leaves is weird, but milk on beans is weird. No. Milk on beans, you know, actually sounds weirder. Yeah, it does. Because it it, does. It's it's like golden crisp, right? Like golden crisp looks like little beans. And that's cereal, and you put milk on that. So because of the cereal, know, it's, it's just ruined his like whole that. outlook. Yeah, it makes you've it won okay. me over. <laughs> do you want me to send you a bit moji about it? <laughs> Gus, in all seriousness, what could I do to get you to never send me a bit moji? How ever much again? money? You see, initially I started using it ironically, and then I can tell that that's long gone. That, that, that's long gone. It. Then I'm just like, love it. Totally it's the same thing with the vaping. <laughs> <laughs> what about the vaping, dude? So did you guys smoke before cigarettes? No, don't now either. Maybe if I was drunk once in a while. It's so weird that you just want to vape. Yeah, it, how did it's he, that weird, he even I guess. get into... Well, it started literally as a bit. My roommate that I lived with in my previous place, he vaped 24-7 and he would talk like a bro. And that's how the kid bro voice came to because I would just with him do it as a bit together because we make each other laugh. And then I was like, let me hit your vape. Let me hit your vape. And then eventually he's like, I have an extra. And I was like, can I buy it off you? And he's like, yeah, for sure. And then I started doing it ironically for the videos entirely. Like it was really stupid and funny. And then we just kept doing it. And then I always had it. And then Steve would do it. And then he got one. And then James got one. And now everybody's vaping. <laughs> it's just literally the, the whole laws of addiction. Truly, yeah. Nicotine turns out it's really addictive. Like but we I didn't feel like the great company we company's no onto something. Who knew? <laughs> Guys, Never, I think nicotine might be addictive. <laughs> the only think? issue that we are facing currently is if we vape too much, I think it could lead to popcorn lung. Mm, and we do vape too much. What's what is popcorn lung? Tell me That's about where your that. lung fills with fluid and you have to get it drained. And then maybe it becomes a chronic issue, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> it's just a risk that we're trying to take right now. But that doesn't have with cigarettes or weed or anything. True. What, why do they call it popcorn lung? I don't think it's called popcorn lung. It's some, Popcorn lung something else. I think this is like... What else is it? It's, it's, is it something else, or is it popcorn lung? For the I think it's popcorn lung. I Absolutely, it is. Versions. I don't know why it's called popcorn lung, but when you Google that, don't look at images. Of yeah, that would be gross. It's sometimes caused by breathing in a chemical used to flavor microwave popcorn. Oh, so it's not popcorn. But maybe that chemical is also used in uh, vape. Could be juice. Is it a, a glycerin, a vegetable glycerin, perhaps, or a? What I'm, if I'm you loading it. That was just the summary. Chug a load of vape juice. You would probably have a nicotine, nicotine overdose, overdose and yeah. wind up um, with nicotine poisoning. Ah, there is. Didn't a know thing. that was a thing. And now you know. I now tried I know. it and nothing Ting. happened. So educational. You tried it. That was a lie. Gavin, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to make my life sound a lot cooler for you. Di I really, I it's diacetyl. Pretty cool life. Diacetyl. And it's used in many electronic cigarette flavors. E-cigarettes are... Oh, flavors, yeah. Okay, so it could be or could not be in the so juice So why don't we reason. just not get vape juice with that in it? It probably doesn't exist, and it probably is used in all vape liquids, I would assume. And it's that's a simple answer. And there yeah. you go. We're going to get popcorn lung. Do you guys have any addictions? But it'll be delicious. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I have a very addictive, I don't know, personality. I've, I've, like, I've drunk booze a lot. Mm -hmm. I've never thought, man, I could do it with a beer. Well, that's I've how I not. feel about vaping, actually. Like, I have not vaped for several days because I just didn't, left it somewhere and didn't have it. I didn't think about it until I saw it again. I went, oh, yeah, I like vaping, so I continue to vape. I don't vape because, oh, I need it. I feel an urge for it. I just, if it's there, I'll do it because I like yeah. it. Yeah, I've certainly never had a craving for anything. To be like, oh, I just need to get this right now. And I Not don't have chocolate it. or anything like that? Nah. Really? No food cravings ever? Your no, I mean, I, I, I might sometimes feel like, oh yeah, I could do with that. I'm never gonna go out and get it. Really? You've never been like Jones and for some I've never dirty Jones cheeseburger? I've enough. Some to cheeseburger not. dipped in shit. I'll just eat... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just see something else, maybe like a urine-filled sock. But that doesn't cut it when you want something, so you just really, really don't have an addiction. Sounds like you have a, a life that hasn't come from trauma. Uh, uh, I would say that's accurate. Do you have, something, life you have, you have something you don't want to talk about? That or we can talk about? Something you don't want to talk about? <laughs> I have nothing to talk about. Everything went great. How's your childhood? How's your childhood? Who hurt you? 
My childhood is fine. Who didn't hurt you? Who didn't? Who should have? <laughs> uh, maybe an, an uncle, a great uncle. <laughs> All right. Well, I can get in touch with him. And make it okay. happen. So. I think I drink too much. I tried. I actually really? went last week. I didn't drink for a week to see if I could make it. How often do you drink then? What's too much? There is every. no too much, and I drink every day. Every day? Wow. Yeah. I could. I didn't picture that actually with you. Yeah. See, I, I, are you drunk general. right now? But do you get drunk, or do you just have a couple beer? Because that's uh, very different. I, feel like. I don't. I don't think I get drunk. Okay, well you're drunk oh, then. Yeah, if you don't know where sure. you are, you're no, drunk. no, like like you said, <laughs> I, I hold it together. People are like, "Wow, I didn't know you were wasted." Yeah, true. Same yeah. kind of thing. I, but I knew I was wasted. Uh, I, <laughs> Miles slaps me in the stomach, and I try to vomit into a, a milk crate. I passed out <laughs> naked on the floor. Wake up in the pool now and sweat, vomit, and come, and <laughs> still didn't know if I was drunk or not. But I'll figure out one of these days. I think I got speaking of which, I think I got roofied once by accident. By accident, Did you roofie yourself. That's usually how they happen. Like uh, I was out with a friend of mine. And we were at a bar downtown, uh-huh. and I wasn't out very late. Like we just, uh, I just had like two beers at the bar, and I went home. And this was years ago, and I started like I launched World of Warcraft. I was like I'm gonna play some World of Warcraft. Fuck yeah! And did then, you play Guild Wars two real quick. What's that? Guild Wars two. I never did. All right, continue. Then uh, <laughs> next thing I knew, I woke up the next morning, and I was like laying face down in my bathroom naked. I was like, what the fuck happened? Well, there is blackout drunk, but but it was two beers. Oh, you and, were and I didn't absolutely keep, roofied every time. Right, and I, and I didn't keep drinking. Both like, beers I, had roofies. Yeah, I sat down to play a video game. Luckily, I was at home. And Who then would I woke roofie up, you, like, at a bar? I don't know if it was, you like... sweet soul. I don't know if, if it was if I took someone else's beer or what was going on. Mm. Did you take someone else's beer? No. I, I, I took what was given to me. Wow. But Who were you with at the time? Uh, a good friend I've known for a long time. He or Ooh. she? He. he oh, he it. roofied you. <laughs> Uh, were you sore in any certain places? <laughs> I was fine. <laughs> it's totally okay. Well, it's funny because Steve, uh, every time we go out, he roofies himself. His own drink. <laughs> Just Trying to, to add up the, the night, night up. For... Then you're a cheap drunk. <laughs> <laughs> right? you, don't, you, don't, you don't need a drink very he much. He roofies himself and comes on to me. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's never happened to me. I've, I've certainly got surprisingly drunk off little alcohol before, but I think that's just... Depends on how much you ate or like yeah. how tired you are. Definitely, same. Big fact. Couple beer and you're like, wow, I am too drunk right now. Yeah, <laughs> to the point where everyone's like, how, you know, did you drink before we went out? And people are like, you had two beers, dude. And you're like, <laughs> okay, get off my back. <laughs> they were <laughs> sorry, I'm they, drunk. They were tall boys. <laughs> yeah, they were tall boys. That's one and a half, <laughs> half pal. They're, they're big. <laughs> Do you guys uh, often take bathroom breaks on this podcast? No. Oh, do you need to pee really bad? Ah, nah, I don't. We're about to take. A, we're about to wrap up here in a couple <laughs> minutes, so you're, you're good. Uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up before we go, uh, I saw. Remember that app, Musically? Yeah. Did you see? Oh, where people like lip sync to crap. Right. Do you see it sold today for, for a, a billion billion dollars? What? And that was a guess. A billion dollars. A billion dollars. I don't understand. It was it like a billion? It, it's it, the estimate is between eight hundred million and one billion dollars. Do well, they have like a why? stipulation where if they reach a certain goal, then they get another billion, or is it just flat out a billion? I, all I saw was that flat out a billion. Do you want to know why though? I mean, it's pretty obvious if you've seen like how large people get, how quickly these kids get, and like young teenagers get on musically. They get like twenty two million followers, all of them, every last Jeez one. Jesus Christ, it's insane for literally but just going. They they also said though that. <laughs> Their engagement, <laughs> their, followers. their engagement peaked last summer. Like oh. it's been downhill since like last summer. They they, they don't have as many people. I actually on. I haven't heard the name mentioned in months. Right. Yeah. But Those were the most popular vines, dollars. right? When people would lip sync to songs anyway. Mm-hmm. So then they just made a whole app about that. What a weird business model. But, and now they're doing it with animojis, right? Like you've Musically's seen that. like got big sex appeal to it. Like everyone's trying to be hot on musically. Like it's not funny. But you said it was kids. Well, that's what I mean. They're still trying to be like the teenagers and everything. They're trying to they're dancing and being sexy so that all these other younger kids follow them on it. And Soon it'll be robots doing it. Yeah, it will be. They'll be doing the robot? Sexually. Is it too too much inception? <laughs> the robot doing the robot? Yeah. <laughs> and robot is there's couples, couples on there. Like, do you think a robot would be offended? Like, we don't move like that. <laughs> there's a highly offensive <laughs> thing for this racist. dance. <laughs> right. Robots we'll, sue the company. <laughs> we'll get to that point in the future. Um, has, right. has a robot ever sold something? What is that? What? Like, has a robot ever come up with something that's sold for human money? No. Like a robot developed something? I should no. have said no, because I don't know. Like, but robots make no. cars, right? Like, there's robots on car factory Yeah, lines. but a robot didn't come up with a car. No, like, like has a robot, a robot had an idea. with AI ever painted and sold it? That has to have happened, right? So does a robot have a bank account? I don't think a robot can have a bank account. Well, don't just whoever made the robot. I don't. It's the bank. It's not me. Fair enough. If it was me, I would totally open. A bank I bet the for first robot. robot-friendly bank will sell for a billion dollars. Oh, mm. easily. <laughs>
uh, or billion bitcoins or whatever. Robots they use. will be the middle class, and all the humans will be just be pilgrims. Have you Bitcoin in Bitcoin. I I My bought I has. bought a Bitcoin this year actually. I bought one. It was in like July. A full Bitcoin? Yeah, it was like twenty five hundred bucks. Oh, so What's it's it worth, worth now? way more than now that. Now it's like seven, over seven, seven, eight Jesus. Thousand. My dad mines them. He's got like the Bitcoin miners. You know what I mean? You guys familiar with how you yeah. get it? So he's got like a whole like six of them in the in his basement that are basically just GPUs, like really strong GPUs. Is that even profitable though at this point? Not anymore. No, I mean you have like, to. Electricity. There are the top of the line ones are always profitable, but you have to still invest now like five grand, and then you'll start making money after you make that back. But his models aren't. And so, you know, they're profitable for a little bit and then they just become obsolete. Yeah, at it, what point does it like cost more electricity than you're well, earning off of Well, in Canada, Bitcoin? it's cold, so my dad would actually use them as heating because they would produce oh, so much heat in the basement. So genius. Bottom floor, he would use that to heat the bottom floor. Your and underfloor then, heating is mining you money. Literally. That's great. Very little. But it was more so about like having it and saving it until it got to this point. But I think he got too impatient and he probably I had to convince to myself another. for a while to get one because... Uh, it's it's like the most money I've ever spent on not like a, a nothing like mm -hmm. you don't get it But it if like you think stock. of it as like just like a kind of weird bank account, then it's not really spending it Truly, yeah. you just have to hope that it goes I up. made yeah. like 300 bucks on Bitcoin like yeah. day trading I would go on like uh, uh, it's called BTCE one of them and uh, you literally just buy sell um, all that jazz so, like in the same day Yeah, you literally buy low sell high you know Classic. where your profit margins are and I did that like three tr four trades a day of making money oh, okay. and over like a month I made like 300 bucks. Yeah, I guess I don't have that cool. speed like I if I when I bought it, it was like two days later that I had it. It's really cool because you feel like you're in the Wolf of Wall Street. You're like, buy, buy, sell, sell. <laughs> I just made three dollars. <laughs> taking this run to the bank, baby. And then I got bored and didn't have enough time. But I, I think what a lot of people are doing now is they're just seeing it going up, and it's like, man, I should have bought it when it was two thousand. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, but when it was two thousand, it was just like seven hundred, like a few yeah. weeks before. So it's like, it keeps should you buy it now at seven thousand? Right. Like, where, where do you think the tank top is? As well. You also don't have to buy a whole thing. You could just buy like a thirty dollars worth Bitcoin. of Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't right now the peak of where it's going to be at? Pretty I much. I think now is like no. the most of where it's not ever been. But it's, it's like who knows? But where it's it'll reached go. seven or so before. No, right? not and not even close. Not seven. It's it's. Well, I, I had think an it, Uber driver explain to me Bitcoin for over an hour when I was driving back from LAX, but I was blackout drunk, so I didn't hear what he said. It started off extremely low, like any altcoin, and then it went up to like. A couple thousand, and then it went down. And, and there are other coins, right? Like, uh, oh, like light, the, light uh, coins or something. Millions. They're just called yeah, altcoins, and they're all on the year. It's up by like. Do they do alt right coins? Percent. Absolutely. I feel and like I we need Joel so here to, <laughs> to, to tell us why we're dumb. All right. Well, we need to wrap up. Uh, before we go, I just want to remind everyone uh, to check out the Rooster Teeth store, uh, and remind you that if you're a first member, first members get five percent off of all purchases, even if you buy something like this. Oh, is that a lightsaber sound? Yes, it's the lightsaber. It's mine. Yep. Uh, so it. check it out. Uh, do all your holiday shopping there. And uh, it's right there. Cut away from me. Go to the wide. All right. Do you boys have to make pee pee? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we'll, yeah go, we'll, we'll go with you. All right. Peep. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, thanks for having us. Hey there. This is Gus. We've got a special supplementary portion of the podcast here. We're joined by a couple of guests. Uh, we got uh, Richard Turner. And Luke Corum, uh, Richard is the subject of a documentary that Luke directed called Delt, which just came out, right, uh, end of October? Yeah, just released October 20th. Mm -hmm. And Gavin, of course, is over there. Uh, yeah, we don't right. want to forget Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I thought it was a really interesting documentary, and some of the producers on Delt were also some of the producers who worked on Crunch Time, which is a, a series that Richard Teeth distributed last year. Mm -hmm. And that's how, actually how I got in touch with you guys. Uh, I think I met, ran into Andrew Lee. And, uh, you know, he talked to me about the premise of the film. I thought it would be awesome to have you guys on. And I got a chance to check it out. And I thought, well, we should, we should absolutely have Richard on to, to show us his stuff. <laughs> and I'll just be the sidekick. Yeah, I'm just here to watch. <laughs> and that's why my, I always hurt. So he's always kicking me in the side. <laughs> so, um, Richard, how would you describe what it is that, that you're known for or that you do? Well, I'm known as a card mechanic. And people are, in the casino industry, they know that term. Outside of it, it's a little not quite as familiar, but if you go back 150 years, it was very well known. A card mechanic is somebody who can control the outcome of a card game. In other words, pick up a deck of cards and make anybody win or lose at will. And those techniques are really, really, really difficult to acquire. And in fact, during the days of the Old West, your average hustler would spend half their life learning one or two moves, and that's what they lived on. I just spent my life putting in a whole lot more hours and learning <laughs> many, many, many moves. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, I, it, it makes sense that casinos would know this term, but that most people mm -hmm. wouldn't know this term because, you know, in my mind, it was just card tricks or, right. or, or magic, and it's, right. it's not those things at all. And you spend uh, quite a bit of time in the documentary talking about 
the difference between what it is that you do versus those other terms. Actually, I grew up performing magic. That's how I met Richard. Oh, really? Like, yeah, my dad made his living as a professional magician back in the 80s. and um, So I grew up around it my whole life and performed until I was a teenager. But the first time I saw what Richard can do and what we're about to watch, my jaw hit the floor because it is not like anything you've ever seen a magician do before. Yeah, it's magical. <laughs> you know, but it's not again. It's not magic. Yeah. And 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 just so you understand, the other side of it, a magician cannot do the work for the card table. But a, the work, the people that work the card table, a mechanic can do the stuff a magician yeah. can do. It makes me think about. I saw Penn Jillette actually give a a speech about how he does card tricks, and it's mm -hmm. totally different. You know, he said when he goes into a card trick, he doesn't know ultimately what trick he's going to perform. It's as cards are drawn and as mm -hmm. he has interaction with the audience that it narrows down. He starts from a wide net and then it narrows down very precisely. Mm -hmm. Whereas you are in control of the deck the entire time and yeah. you know what's going on. Or I can take a deck that you have controlled and take control and put it back the way I want it. True. <laughs> so you want to give us yeah, a little demonstration of what we're talking about? Okay, a deck for you okay. and a deck for me. Just take your deck, cut it any way you want. All right. Now give it an up the river cut. I already screwed it up, okay. Give it an alternating up the river cut. Right. Give it a flying three way. Right. I'm not as fast as you, okay. I'm not as good as you. Now break them, this is Casino Procedure, break them in half, 26, 26. Oh God. Okay, now lace them up nice and even every other card. <laughs> Do that twice, lace them up nice and even. It was not nice or even. <laughs> okay, now give it a, what's called a strip cut, a bunch of random piles again. Once again, break them in half. I'll do this nice and slow, nice and even. Okay. And give the deck a just a regular straight cut. That's basic casino procedure. Okay. So I've shown you a half a dozen ways of shuffling and cut, cutting the deck. They should be pretty evenly mixed, yes? Yes. Hold your cards off the table to see how evenly mixed the deck is. Does that look even? <laughs> we have ace two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, ace two, three, suited numerically, yes? Absolutely. I, suited, I shuffled them back into perfect numerical order. I don't, I don't, I don't like, like, I don't like the random stuff. It confuses the old brain. <laughs> it's immediately. That's crazy. All right, and Gavin, here's a deck for you. Shuffle them up and have them ready to go. Pass that deck. Now, this deck is scrambled, okay. messed up by you. Here you go. Now, I'll give you a for instance of what a, what a mechanic can do. I'll give the deck a cut, and we will burn a card. You've played blackjack, I'm sure. Yes. You're sitting at Benny Benyon's place. He'll let you make any bet, uh, any amount as long as it's your first bet. Pick a, first of all, pick a number of players at the table. Three, four, or five, pick a number. Uh, let's say four. Where are you seated? One, two, three, or four? We'll do four. You want the fourth position, one, two, three, this is you. Okay. At a four, at a, um, a four player table, and you have a half a million dollars sitting on this hand. What's that first card? It's an ace. And what's that? 10. And you just walked out with a million and a quarter. But see, you just shuffled, shot, chose the number of players, chose where you wanted to sit. In the time I dealt, I took care of business for right. it. Right. From, from the deck that I handed you. That you just messed up. Right. Are those all face down? <laughs> they are. Mess them up some more. Okay. The messing up is uh, a good shuffle. way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Pass that deck. There it is. All right. Oh, oh, well, come on now, there, there Gavin. You go. Keep the things in order. <laughs> <laughs> messy, messy, messy. Uh, have you ever played in a private card game? Sure. Where the deck is passed around the table. You know, it's your deal, it's Gavin's deal, it's Luke's deal, it's my deal. You just handed me a shuffle deck. Watch. I'm going to use the same procedure like you're doing there, and I'm going to do what's called call a slug. And uh, once again, you do a bunch of random piles and another riffle and a, sh a cut. When, again, that's basic casino procedure. Now, after the fact, you're going to tell me how many people step up to my table. I pick a number of players, five, six, seven, what should we have? Five. Five players. Hold your cards off the table out of the way. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, burn, and we have what's called the flop. We're dealing Texas Hold'em. And what is that card, Gus? Uh, you got a three, jack, and ace there. Burn, what's that? Ace. Burn, what's that? Six. And you're sitting, you're my partner sitting over here in hand number four. Let's see what you have in the pocket. What's that? Ace. What's that? Ace. You killed him. <laughs> but you just shuffled. You chose five players. I took care of business for you. <laughs> so you're saying that we should never play at a, a private game? <laughs> well, unless well, we just with people we know very well. Yeah, very good. Make sure they're all one direction. But the question is how many people can actually do what you're seeing. That is the thing. 
not that it takes this type of work to cheat unsuspecting people, mind you. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I'll show you some moves. Hand, hand me the deck. There you go. Name a card. Let's say the five of hearts. Pull out the fives. All of the fives. All five of them, yeah, set them right here. Mm -hmm. Two. Looking for, I'm looking for him. There's only four. Four, yeah, four. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were wondering if he was going to catch on right, Gavin. You got them in your hand? Uh, no, uh, they Hold are in my hand now. Hang on to them. Hang on to them. Hand them to me face up. Face up. There you go. That's so you can see them. What's your favorite suit? Spade, diamond, club, or heart? Uh, well, let's do club. Take the club. That's the one that looks like a puppy foot. There you go. I got it. All right. I'll leave the other three on the bottom. You with me? Yes. I'll educate you. Hand me the five of clubs face up. Watch the five of clubs. Face up? Face up. Five of clubs. I want the five of clubs. So what happens is I deal cards around the table to the other players. Only when I'm ready do I deal the five of clubs. Watch face up. See how the card stays as the second card is dealt. But you have to deal it like you're dealing from the top. And they're not off the bottom. The other fives haven't moved. And the first card dealt is not a five. Watch again. I'll deal it really slowly for you. Five on top, yes. Mm -hmm. Five on top. See, I'm the dealer, and I have a 16. I hit the other places, the other players. The game is blackjack, and that five would equal 21. Watch again. This is slow motion, completely exposed. See how the card stays. Here's one-handed, one-handed. Now, when the five is face down, it's never face up during play. See, you can't tell you've been swindled. In that phone. Can't tell at all. <laughs> but that's called dealing seconds. Dealing seconds. And how many, Richard, how many times have you done the second deal? The second deal I have done in front of a live audience over five million times. Wow. That I one move. I've done, and I've done that. Anything five million times. <laughs> yeah, and probably not even breathing. But in practice, I've done it over a hundred million times. How often do you practice, or how long do you practice? I, I practice, well, here I'll give you a for instance. I practice. Well, now I only practice three to 10 hours a day. But for years, I practiced 10 to 20 hours a day, seven days a week, for 26 years straight. Pick a number 10 to 20, Gavin. 17. Watch, this will give you an idea of what we're talking about. We'll cut, try cutting 17 cards. Can you count them one on top of the other? See how close to 17 we got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> yeah. Gavin's eyes just got huge. So to be able to, you know, to go down and hit the number that fast is tough. I'll do it again. Any number 1 to 52, but don't say 52 because I pass the deck and nobody cares. You want me to do it? Yeah. Pick or either. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, let's say 25. 25? Two yes. Half a deck? Yes. Uh, okay. Not quite half a deck. Okay. You see how close right. there. Got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, of course, uh, let's see here. Um, I'll show you, what are those cards? All the fives. All oh, your fives? Yes. I'll show you another one of the purposes. Well, here, here, here's another move. Fives. Down in the cellar, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. on, on the bottom. Because you've heard the old westerns, the gamblers back then. They'd, you've heard of them dealing off the bottom, right? Four, three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 five. five. Is that a five? It is not. Someone's cheating. Someone's cheating. What's that? Five, 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 <laughs> five. See, right under your nose, with prior knowledge. I dealt your fives from the bottom. And, and so, in the film, I tell you, we I remember we brought him in a studio, and for two days we filmed all of his card work with uh, close-up macro lenses, under glass bottom tables, like all these moves. And I was like, Richard, before we do this, I just want to make sure you know what we're about to do. And I was like, Are you sure this is okay? And he goes, Yeah, no one can do it anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> is there anybody else even anywhere close to the caliber of like being a card mechanic like you are? Oh, uh, there was a couple, one named Steve Forty, who's in the film. He's a genius as genius. The guy's brilliant, amazing. Another, uh, he's got a student of mine named Jason England. He's amazing. Uh, he started working on my stuff about 27 years ago, and he first saw me when he was 11 years old when I was on a TV show called That's Incredible, back in, filmed in 1981. Uh, but, you know, they've, you know, Jason, he's been working on some of my moves for 20 years and, ju and, and just starting to get them. So it, it shows you it, it takes a lot of effort.
It was, I mean, it, it, does he ever get discouraged? Like, I think if I worked on something for 20 years and it, it, it took me that long to start getting something, I'd say, like, maybe I should yeah. find something else to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I had another guy who was a well-known mechanic named uh, Larry Jennings. I showed him one of my sh shifts, and he worked on it for 10 years and said, I, I can't get it, and he, he just gave up. Wow. So, and, uh, but it does. It, that, I call myself the poster boy for obsessive compulsive behavior. I'm proud of it, too. Dude. Because not many people are wired in a way that, as my son says, he never stops. You know, I, you know, I'll go all, all day, all night, and the only time I stop is long enough to work out or to eat. Well, yeah. you, have also, you also work out while you're shuffling cars, Well, too. that's true. Well, yeah. you know, to kill two rocks with one bird. <laughs> or in this case, to kill two rocks with one rooster with teeth. Yeah, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have, like... How, in your lifetime, how many decks of cards do you think you've gone through? Oh, tens of thousands. I actually built a ha card castle. My wife, um, I, I, you can see it on when I was, I, I was on a TV show called Ripley's Believe It or Not with Jack Palance back in 84. And I had, oh, I had a six bedroom ha house and one bedroom had nothing but boxes of cards, boxes like this big, overflowing, not in the case, just f random cards. I'd throw them in there because I thought, what if they ever made cards illegal? Or, <laughs> or, they, or the, we went through some drought. I had to, I, I, so I just saved them for the decades. And then my wife, Kim, said, can we do something with these cards? I mean, you take up a whole room. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? I have too many to build a card house. I'll build a card castle. So I literally glued them together, and I used eight gallons of Elmer's wood glue. It weighs 800, 825 pounds, and the rest of them I threw away but the, to build this castle. And uh, it's on display at the second largest Ripley's in the country, uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, in San Antonio. And uh, so I was on the TV show, Ripley's Believe It or Not. My card castle is on display in, the, in Ripley's Believe It or Not. And in 2015, I have been certified as an oddball. <laughs> I have the sort of, you might be odd. Oddball you might, certification. I'm certified, you're not. <laughs> I, 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 they said, you're in the 20, 2015 issue of Ripley's Believe It or Not book of eye-popping oddities. <laughs> and, and then I had a piece of paper that certified that I'm an oddball. So can you tell the difference between like different card manufacturers? Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, oh, that's like asking if Liberace can tell the difference between a piano that was... Uh, that uh, was, yeah, yeah, a piano that sat in the church for 80 years and one that's uh, the Steinway's top. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can, uh, within two seconds out of the box, I can tell you which direction they were cut. I can give you a half a dozen elements. He's of, the touch analyst for U.S. Playing Card Company. Oh, they, really? they actually, about 30 years ago, he called them up and told them that they, when they were cutting the cards, like stamping them out of a piece of, out of the paper, that the blade was going through the wrong side of the, of the, of the card. And also that the moisture level was off and the, the thickness in the card stock. And they're like, who is this guy? And, and they put him on retainer. <laughs> and to this day, they send Richard decks of cards that are unmarked <laughs> And that he feels the difference, and they say he can feel within one one thousandth of an inch difference of a card. Yeah. Wow. So exactly. cards like this and a, a bicycle and B, you can actually buy a gold seal deck, and when you open it up, there's a card that says T "Tested and Approved by Richard Turner." And bicycle is the most recognized label. All the cards are made by U.S. Playing Card Company. B, these, this is their premium product. For a, they started making these in 1892. That's what the 92 stands for on the box. Mm. Bicycles in the, back in the 1880s, and it's the most recognized label is Bicycle, but this has always been their premium. They make Hoyle, Tally Ho, Kim, and uh, just about every other deck. Other than now, there's competitions out of China and, and other countries, but they're not nearly the quality that you get from U.S. Playing Card Company. Interesting. So, what, you know, like, like we said, this movie just came out uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, what... What made you, I guess, agree to be the subject of this film? Was it just wanting to, to more people to know what it is that you do with no. with these cards? Uh, I've I've already been seen on many shows all over the world, and um, so I wasn't looking for any more notoriety. Uh, in fact, I actually turned down two offers to make a uh, made-for-TV movie because I said I'm too young. And then uh, then I actually had uh, five, five years ago I had an offer out of L.A., an offer out of New York, and the Texans to do a, a feature documentary on my life. And I had sent Luke's previous film called Lord Montague about an English aristocrat 
to a friend of mine named Dave McFadzian. He created, he co-created and produced a TV series called Home Improvement with Tim Allen. Mm -hmm. And he, movies like What Women Want with Mel Gibson. And anyway, we've been friends since the 70s. And I said, Dave, take a look at this guy. These guys, this is one of the companies that are asking to do a film. And he watched that film. He said, these guys are good. I would go with them. And Luke didn't know he was being vetted. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know any of that was going on. <laughs> he just said he wanted to see my last film. That's about it. Yeah. But anyway, um, and I'm glad I did because Luke, I consider him more like a brother, even, uh, even though... He's easily young enough to be my son because I'm in my 60s. He's in his 30s. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's, he has that same focused, obsessive nature. We're slightly both obsessive about things. I'm obsessive yeah. about film. Richard's obsessed with cards. So yes. we he get along pretty well. Exactly. Yeah. He would sit there for 12, 14 hours on his edit, with his editor and editing and, and, and yeah, just going to the nth degree in the same way I did it with cards, he does it with film. And, and uh, I think uh, you probably, since you said you saw it, you mm -hmm. saw the quality of the changes from scene to scene in the filming. The, and anyway, they did a, everybody that's seen the film uh, have uh, been really, really impressed with what these guys did. And, I mean, we're 92 on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's pretty good for a Rotten Tomato, and we're not even a Rotten Tomato. Yeah, I love uh, documentaries. This is such an interesting subject for, uh, for me to watch, and uh, I was totally enthralled the whole time. So uh, thank you so much for coming out and, and talking to us about the movie and, and showing us in person uh, how you're able to work a deck like that. It's absolutely incredible. You shuffle this deck, I'll do something to close out. Okay. You shuffle this deck? Yes, I did, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, what is this mess here? I left it in a line. You sure <laughs> the heck did? Okay. You shuffled out. Let's close out something fancy. Through the years, I had people openly challenge me to use my skills to try to beat them. I had this guy, he owned a large commercial construction company. He wanted to cut high card for the pot. He cut a 10, and I cut what's that card? Ace. Uh, he said, let's double it again. He cut a king, and I cut what's that card? It's an ace. Again, he asked to double. He cut a jack, and I cut what's that card? It's an ace. And again, he asked to double. He cut another king, and I cut what's that? Uh, ace. <laughs> Grab the card. <laughs> Show the cam. Pretty fancy. That's the fancy way of shuffling. Wow. Cutting the high card. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, if people want to check it out, the movie's called Delt. And uh, it's out now, right? Yeah, you can watch uh, it on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Google Play, anything on all, all the platforms. You can watch it online right now. And in the theaters and select theaters around the country, but all the other VODs. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank thanks you for, for watching. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks appreciate for it. Thanks. <laughs>